No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I have somehow gotten my wife to co host while we talk to one of the greatest living Americans. <laughs> Bro, thank you so much. Top alpha male, if you ask me. Really like the Andrew Tate of America. Don't do that to him. No? Well, what? I agree with that. Ugh, you disagree? I'm leaving. <laughs> A symbol of masculinity. I could just keep going. Keep going. Steiny. What's going on? How What's you doing, your man? real full name? Aaron Steinberg. Okay. No, this is uh this is like crazy for me. So I, I'm really glad you're having me here. Is it really? I feel yeah. like you're you're huge at this point. I Bro. feel like it shouldn't be crazy for you. No, no jumper's legendary. <laughs> I'm I was honestly shocked when you asked me to come on. I utilized the fact that you and Lena had uh, been filming uh, some sort of video together. Not that kind of video, but I utilized that. I was like, oh, this is a perfect time to try to really make a push for the Steiny interview. Three months later, here we are. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I'm so glad. And I'm glad, Lena, I'm so glad you could be here, too. I'm a little nervous about being here. Why are you nervous and why are you hunched over? Like, what was that? That's going to be your thing today? Yeah, this is my thing. Because <laughs> I was on one night with Steiny, which I don't know if you know what happens at that podcast. It but. seems like a, just a little bit of like a flirtatious song and dance, right? Maybe. I mean, I'm a professional at the end of the day. Right. But I mean, it depends. Like, <laughs> it, if things happen and it escalates, it escalates, bro. So that's why you guys wanted to do this together is because you've got a little bit of a thing for him? You know. Oh, God. I thought I was doing <laughs> plug talk, by the way. No, but we should go take a photo over there because that's like an automatic meme. Bro, I thought I thought I was doing plug talk. I don't really do two guys and one girl. Really? That's my one thing. I'm more of a two girls and one guy. But out I, of a watch, so that's okay. There's no okay. other girls here. I know. What a shame. I thought there was going to be a bunch when I walked in. Maybe we can go find like a homeless lady outside. Oh, my God. You <sighs> down for that? If, it depends. If you have more drinks, then yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. There could be like a fire homeless chick maybe. See, I feel like kind of like part and parcel of being homeless is that you like don't have access to a shower or good nutrition okay. and you're probably on meth and you don't really have any friends. So in that way, I feel like I'm going to advise you to not sleep with any homeless women. Okay, but what if you strike out at the bar? It's 3, 3 a.m. and you walk out and then she's like, in your mind, if you walk out at 3 a.m., she could be like, Seven or an eight, right? If I could redo my life, one of the main things that I would do is I would not have just whoever at the end of the night. I would have like upheld some level of standards. And I think that that would have like guided me well in my life. Does you're this not, happen to you a lot? You're yeah, not at bro, that I think you're kind of speaking to me right you're now. You're not at that point yet, though? <laughs> I'm at that point right now. Really? Yeah, where I feel like uh, I got to be more selective. selective and just like not settle for whatever. Right. And you know? that's tough. Because when you're, especially when you're drunk, right? Your your window of like what you can think about in your life is pretty small. It's just like, oh, what what is the next twenty minutes of my day or next hour or two going to be like? And getting laid seems like the most important thing in the world. But I think that you're really like f up your energy by just giving it to all these random scallywags. Okay, so how do I avoid that moving forward? Just off, I think. Just don't drink. I don't watch anymore. You don't. How no. long has it been? That I can't get behind. Uh. Three days. <laughs> Three days. Yeah, How do you I stopped feel? watching. Really? Yeah. Last thing I watched was her clip, her tape. Three days ago? Yeah. <laughs> I never, I'd never seen it. That's a throwback. I'd never seen it, bro. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'd never seen it, and I was like, yo, I don't know. I just like, You're like this like, is what I want to watch. Like your last meal, the last thing you watch <laughs> the before the before you make a full break with porn. Exactly. I watched that, and I was like, yo, that's what made you quit porn. It was so bad. <laughs> you were like, I'm never. Yeah, it wasn't that again. bad. It was just like, yo, like. I don't know. I just watched that and I was like, this isn't for me. What did I say, though? The Andrew Tate of America. I don't know if that's a good comparison or not, bro. No, I mean, but, but you at least have the anti masturbation message in common. I'm trying it. Or I can compare you to Sneeko, whatever you like. I like Sneeko. Do you? You don't like Sneeko? No, well, I mean, he's all right. But he came on here. No, I do. I, he's, he's my friend. It's just like he's kind of like he just says shit that is so retarded sometimes on Twitter that it's like, oh, like. You're my friend, but I hate you right now. Yeah. But I'm sure I've, he feels the same way about some of my actions. I'll tell you, I got, I have mad love for Sneeko just because if you watch, sometimes he'll story clips uh -huh. and he's literally 12 years old. Right. Like doing the same, like preaching stuff. So I respect that because he's been doing the same thing for so long. Right. That that's kind of who he is. Right, but he's kind of like a grifter, where he's sort of like whatever he's doing is basically based on whatever's popular at the time. Sure, and, you know, but bro, you can't take him too serious. But it's like we're watching him grow up on camera. 
yeah. like figuring out what his ideology is going to be. There's an amazing meme that is like, hmm, you've really given me a lot to think about. It's like fresh and fit, and they're saying F- women, and he's like, hmm. You've really given me a lot to think about. <laughs> okay, so what I'll say on that is... <laughs> but it's like all these people say, you gotta see it. No, well, I, what I'll say on that is right now he's getting a little heat because he preaches against like the OnlyFans, right. all that shit, and then he's kind of filming with them right now. Right. Yeah. So that part, that's a little tough. But like, I don't take him too serious, right? right. I, th- I just like take the shit he's saying like I did him recently on my pod with uh, Sophia. I don't know if you saw that. But then you had to delete it? I couldn't put it on YouTube. Why? Just because of him? He's a, he... And he pisses he YouTube hard. off. Yeah, but I I did an interview with him, fully monetized. He's got like a million views or some shit, like a couple, like a month ago, two months ago. Yeah, but I think that he just continues this like YouTube attitude. Right. And it's just pissing him off. But so I, what, you were afraid that you're going to get your channel taken down? I didn't want to risk a strike or anything like that. And yeah. I heard. Dude, I interviewed Nick Fuentes. I know. You can just do whatever. It's like as long as like we had to edit out the part where he said that the Holocaust didn't happen. But besides that, you can just do whatever. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. We it did had, happen. I, I don't know if we had to edit that out. I just did because I felt like, well, there's something that could clearly be a pretty easy. So reason. did you upload it to Twitter then? I put it on Twitter. The clips went crazy. He, so Sophia Franklin and I do a lot of uh, videos. Uh, X. X. Thank you. It is X. So please. Oh, God, f- that. Yeah, it's X now. Twitter. But um, we did an episode. It was fucking amazing. One of my favorite pods I've ever done because Sophia Franklin's a very like, I, I don't want to say alpha female, but she's mm. like, you know what I'm saying? She's like, kind of bitchy. She's kind of put you in your place. Exactly. And like, she's been fading me for like two years now. We have so much sexual tension and mm-hmm. she, I don't know what it is, but she won't give in. Are you like super attracted to her? I think she's pretty hot among the lot. I do, hot. bro. Yeah. Let's get her on plug talk. Let's she do the does, floor. She doesn't do porn. I was thinking about that when I was watching that episode though, uh, this morning. I was thinking like, if she did porn, I feel like she would be one of the hottest porn stars. Would you give her that? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'm kind of attracted to the, like that, like, she like... Like I'm too good girl. for you. You feel me? Yeah, I like that energy. I just like that energy. And it's like, I'm too good for you. But, but like, do you want it to continue on in a relationship? Like, would you want a girl who's just sort of emotionally abusive towards like you? Like her? I don't know. I would never marry her. Really? Like that. No, I'd do a one night stand for sure. One night She'd stand? She'd probably, well, we'll see how it'd go. But I think we could do maybe like two. I feel like if, if you get some pussy like that, you gotta, you gotta go back to the well a few times. You know, you, you gotta see what your second performance might be like. I know, bro. Is that like a thing? Like, is it all about how you perform on the first night? Like, does that, like, what if I fuck up on the first night and I don't perform my best? I fucked her the first night. I think I probably lasted like a couple minutes and she kept coming back, which says a lot. I feel like it depends. I feel like it depends on how much build up there is. If you're building up for like weeks and weeks and weeks and you meet up and the guy in five seconds and you maybe drove a few hours or whatever but the build up is the reason why he nutted in five seconds yeah well he should i've actually heard that that's a compliment too listen i get that a lot like yeah (laughs) that was 10 minutes it was actually 30 seconds but like that's a compliment it's a comment but then when it keeps happening over and over and over then i feel like they have an issue with it but like i have memories of driving you know two three hours to visit my girlfriend in, in college when i was like 19 or 20 get there hang out for an hour we end up in and yeah in like a couple minutes at most and being really embarrassed knowing what i know now i probably would have stopped at a burger king and hit the bathroom and jerked off so i could have sort of pre-gamed for the situation well, bro you're super experienced now now i know all these tricks like do you have a <laughs> problem off at the burger king no but Classic. like genuinely do is it like do you last too long now because you're 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 in the game like that let me tell you something steiny is that when you're when it comes to your sexuality and being able to perform on on camera it's just it kind of like changes all the time like i feel like my fucking, my level of ability to perform kind of fluctuates so I, at this point i try not to push myself to a crazy degree because there's been times where she booked me for three scenes in a row in a day and i just hammered it out three course, scenes in a row in one day i know he told me he could do it. It's not like I was my idea. And he I was did it. Like I can do this. But now I'm just kind of feeling like, well, maybe I don't want to push myself that. But that's hard. a lot of pressure. You gotta burn yourself out in that much. But is that sorry? Is that with you or was yeah, that yeah, mixed yeah. in? You guys, all did, of us, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, team of people. What's going on with this like big group plug talk I've seen? The orgies. Yeah. Do you want to come commentate on one? Oh, that's a good idea. We didn't think. Oh, that was I think I'd go I to did. the. I could come to the pregame. I think I'm gonna have to dip out when like the whole well, orgy see, goes that, down. Malak damn near said the same thing. Trevor Wallace, we kind of tried to get him to be like a guest house. Everybody is like not brand safe enough for them. It's not brand safe. I just feel like once I go down that rabbit hole, bro, like in. I'm in this game. You're yeah. just gonna go in the other room and start 
<laughs> the orgy? Yeah, like I think I'd show up every week at that point. Well, I mean, we had one of the craziest things happen on that where we had like an amateur guest couple come, a girl and a guy, and then they start, the, you know how this works, right? We have one room where yeah. there's the orgy, allegedly, and they were like, the fr they're alone. It's just the guy and the girl, and they're in a relationship, and they're trying to fuck, and the cameraman's filming, and then in the other room, it's us and all these other porn stars, and we're watching on a TV, and he couldn't get hard, and it was like the the ultimate like nightmare scenario for that shit. you're like on live stream you can't get hard and then a couple of the porn girls went in there to save the day and that was a whole thing it's a big risk though like what doing your, it on live yeah. what was your like your first video was it it was edited obviously me and her like it wasn't live eased or... our way into the game very slowly because we were yeah. just filming iphone stuff and then eventually it kind of turned into yeah like, like we were mostly filming for our personal use and then it kind of turned into porn so it didn't really feel like a high pressure situation i feel like maybe like what if i started out with like a make out Online, a make out. <laughs> like you just like see how that goes, cause like you, I don't know. Like why do I have to jump into intercourse? No, that's totally true though. Yeah, you start making out someone and post it online, I'm gonna be so. Confused. I'd be so happy if I met a fucking porn star and she was like, "Yeah, I don't do uh, anything. I don't even show my boobs. I just make out." <laughs> oh my only I'd be fans. So hyped. Honestly though, there's definitely guys out there with like a make out fetish who would just subscribe to the make out. But that that's the pace that you need in porn is like you do everything little by little that's by what I'm little. Saying. You slowly eat it out so why not do your first three months in the industry just making out that's bro you're <laughs> preaching in the choir i think i'm gonna start with that i that's love this a, idea that's not only fans worthy though is it i'm telling you there's something for everyone someone has always tipped me to show them my tonsils you know it's like you never know what someone might be into tonsils just you like, still have those you just take a picture of your tonsils to show them do you still have tonsils yeah okay yeah uh, you should I know that yeah i feel like the, something has been taken away from me there because i've never really got a good look at your tonsils you never asked. I don't know. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah, check them out. Oh, yeah, that's rancid. What's Wait, let me see. They're, there's like, they're, they're kind of like brown. I know. They're kind of, maybe, we, maybe. Do you let's... smoke secretly? I'm just You're kidding. the one who smokes. I'm just kidding. Oh, I got nice tonsils. I did not come here to be abused. <laughs> Steiny. All right, let's get a little bit of background info. So give yeah. us a little bit of like where you're from and, and how, you know, your childhood was. Your the uh, young Steiny. I grew up in Denver, Colorado. Like normal family. Uh, I have a sister, brother. Parents were together. They divorced when I was about 18. Mm -hmm. So I went to high school, did all that shit, went to college, actually graduated from college. And Where'd then, you go? Huh? Where'd you go? CU Boulder. Okay. Colorado. And you were studying what? History. Okay. Graduated, took my LSAT, was about to go to law school, and then I had a buddy of mine. Because I'm, I'm, dude, I know you, you play small action poker online. Like, it's small action. A little bit. But I was a big poker DJ. Like, live? Uh, no, I just play at casino games. Right. Um, in college. Mm -hmm. And so I started to meet a lot of people that were in, like, the gambling space. Right. And I met this guy that worked for DraftKings. And he was like, bro, like, this guy, Bob Menery, do you know him? Yeah. And he's like, bro. He needs somebody out in L.A. I think I was 23 at the time, and I was like, fuck it, bro. I'm going to L.A. I'm going to try this out. Moved to L.A. I started working for Bob, and then um, just met Nelk through Bob, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. And so then you just start trying to make your way in. So at what point do you transfer from Bob to, like, working for someone else? Um, Me and Bob, dude, we had the best life ever. Like, Because he was the party guy. I remember you talking about this. Bro, a time like, about uh. Something. I moved in with Bob, and uh, he's just so fucking nuts. Like, you have you met Bob? Uh, have I met him? I don't know. I've talked to him online a little bit, I think. Yeah, and he's you should play him in Heads Up. That's easy money for you. Really? <laughs> yeah, easy. Wait, so you'll Charity, play for bro. high stakes, but he sucks? We used to play for uh, for my paycheck. You think you're good? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's play. We could play Heads Up. Yeah? Yeah, we could play Heads Up. Okay. But me and him used to play... <laughs> Like, when I worked for him, I was his assistant, bro. Uh -huh. And he'd, we had an online game, and he'd go, yo, like, I'd be in my room, he'd be in his room, and we'd play heads up for my paycheck that week. Really? Yeah. Did you ever lose it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Maybe. I'd be on tilt. How many big blinds? Uh, we'd we're, play, we'd play 510, and then we'd buy in 1,000. Okay. And that, and so you'd have to, like, wager your whole, what, like, that, At that, that point, seems, like, abusive. Nah, bro. Less cool and more like but abusive by who? By me or him? Like if this was being judged by like a real corporation standards, if for sure you have to gamble your whole paycheck, like that's, no, that, I never, I, don't know. I never had to. It was just offered it. Oh yeah. So I would fucking do it, and I'd go on tilt, and then I'd create another Instagram account, and I'd go and DM him, because Bob would 
go through his DMs and he'd DM people back. Uh -huh. okay. So I'd create a fake account. I would just chirp the fuck out of him. <laughs> so I'd literally be sitting close to him from a burner account. Like, bro, you're a fucking bitch. Like all this shit. And he'd be responding and I'd be from a burner account. And so you'd be doing this while you're playing poker to gain an edge? No, after. Oh, after. So I'd be so tilted. Really? But he goes through all like all his DMs like that. So I could fuck with him. And it, for me, it was like the most satisfying, funniest thing of all time. How long did it take you to confess that? I don't know if I've ever confessed that. This is the first Doing that to your I boss. Him on the pod. To your boss. But I could get away with it because he had no idea. He's like, right. who the fuck is fucking Steven Daniels from, you know what I mean? It's such with a rare followers. setup because the average person with a lot of followers doesn't really like just read their DMs. Or if they do read their DMs, they're not arguing with random people. Yeah, he's one of those guys. He's one of those guys. You can't yeah. like let go. That's such an old head move. No, How old is he now? Is he is he old enough to put uh, him in that box? I think he's like 34. I feel like that's something that pe dudes I know over 40 will do is like argue with every single negative comment. Oh my God, bro. Yeah, yeah that it respond to Twitter and shit. Like that's yeah. an old head move for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So uh, then, so how do you start, stop working with Bob and start working for Nelk? So with Bob, we, we had a big opportunity because me and Bob, like when I started working for him, he was doing Ripper Magoose at the time, which was like an older podcast. His first one he ever did. Right. And it was really starting to gain traction. Um, and we would just fucking, like, that was the biggest grind I've ever gone through. Like, he wasn't making the kind of money he was with Nelk when he did Full Send Pod, as he was at that point. Mm -hmm. And so we were just fucking both grinding. Um, and then he always had a great relationship with Dana White. Mm. Like, always. I don't know how it started, but Dana hit him up and he was like, yo, let's have you come out to Abu Dhabi for a fight. This was peak COVID. And Bob called Kyle and that was the Nelk video where they were out there okay yeah yeah and fucking Bob calls Kyle is like bro I could get you guys there like this is gonna be the biggest thing which it was huge and so Kyle hits or sorry Bob hits up Kyle and he's like yo you guys want to come and so it was the craziest process Kyle confirms he wants to go we had to fly to Vegas first we quarantined there for three days so we couldn't see anybody we were just in a hotel room mm -hmm. and then after that three days we flew to uh, Abu Dhabi and in Abu Dhabi, we had to um, quarantine for three more days. So you literally didn't see anybody. Right. And I think Bob started to get, like, paranoid that Nelk was going to prank him there. <laughs> <laughs> and so the day that we got there, he texted me. He's like, bro, I can't fucking do this shit. I'm, I'm going back to the U.S. So he dipped. And I was like, bro, this is the fucking biggest opportunity. Like, as you guys know, peak COVID. Right. Social media was the fucking hottest thing ever i regret but. that i didn't really like understand that at the time yeah. i didn't understand like oh our numbers are so massively up because of covid yeah. i felt just like oh like our content must be better so right. that must be why we're getting so many more Wait, views he was that afraid of being pranked that he had to leave i think it was that and among other things but like bob bob's just fucking he's a he's a loony he freaks out and shit so uh he freaks out and he dips and he sex he texts me and he's like hey bro i'm going back to boston you can come with me or you can stay here and I was just like, dude, like, this is a big-ass opportunity. Like, I've never been to a UFC fight. Mm -hmm. We're in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. Khabib was fighting his last fight ever. Right. Um, so I was like, bro, I'm going to stay. <laughs> yeah. Like, Dana is fucking coming. To, like, he would come and check the rooms. And he was like, dude, what the fuck's going on with Bob? And I was like, dude, I can't explain this one. Like, he just dipped. Right. I don't know if it's paranoia or whatever, but he dipped. And I was like, what do you think about, like, these Nelk, like, the Nelk crew? He's like, dude, these guys are fucking on fire. They're the guys. Dana just loved them. Loved them. From day one. From day one, bro. He just, like, understood it. And I remember the first time when I had seen, like, their whole operation, and I was like, yo, these guys move, like, with a real infrastructure. They have assistants. They have cameramen. Like, they have everything in place. And Bob and me were so unorganized, like, didn't have fucking shit in plan, right? Uh -huh. So you see an operation like that, and you're like, yo, these guys are really doing it. And Dana was like, dude, these guys are the, like the biggest thing right now. And he was like, you, you should try and fucking join them. Mm -hmm. And so I hit it off with Steve, Kyle, and then they ended up offering me a job. Right. And there. so how did Bob take that? Uh, I called him like 3 p.m. Abu Dhabi time. So it was probably like 2 a.m. U.S. time. And he was absolutely zapped. Right. You fucking piece of shit. Like... <laughs> Bro, I put it on speaker for a second because I was like, yo, this has been going on for five minutes. Right. He was just going off on me. And then a day later, he was like, dude, you got to do what's best for you. Like, I'm going to give you my blessing if you want to fucking go. Because at the end of the day, he left me in the Middle East. Right. Yeah. Like, you fucking, we flew out there. And one thing I left out is he didn't have a passport. 
But he just went out there anyway? Two How? weeks before, he didn't have a passport. Oh, yeah. And he said, you got to give me a passport. So I had to call 100 people to get him a passport. Like, it was a... We had to fly to a different state. Yeah, especially at that time during it, COVID and everything. It was impossible. Right. So I, we got him a passport, and it was a pain in the ass. And I was just like, yo, I'm going to just fucking feel this week out and see how it goes. Uh-huh. And then I hit it off with them, and, the, dude, it was the best... Like, it's just a good time with those guys. And how are you feeling at that time about, like, working for Nelk and doing all this kind of sick shit where, you know, prior to that, getting your history degree and going to <laughs> law school and shit, you're expecting to have this, like, pretty boring-ass life kind of, right? Bro. And you were probably happy with that because realistically it's still, like, a good job and shit. It was, but it's like, dude, like, I could not go to a fucking firm or an office every day. Mm. It just, like, I was like, dude, there's so much. There's got to be more out there. Mm-hmm. And so once I saw this opportunity and, like, how freely, like, Bob would live and like I would live like dude we would go out in LA five nights a week just Mm -hmm. go to a restaurant or go to a bar and for me I was like this is the fucking coolest thing of all time right so I was just like there's got to be something here this is a fucking cool ass life and so I completely forgot about everything else right I was like this is it all in yeah but okay so once you start working for Nelk what kind of stuff do they have you doing um so I initially got hired to work for Selena Oh, right. So I shout started for Selena. Selena. Yeah, shout out oh. Selena. Selena. That's how I first met you, yeah. That's how I met Lena. And we were doing like a photo shoot and signing. Was I think I set that up, did I? Or, yeah, you were, we were in a group chat. You were like setting up the location and everything. Right. Yeah. So it's so very different. Selena had just started doing uh, OF and then they fucking were like, yo, you're going to start running all the photo shoots. Like, let's start doing that. And so I pretty much was working for her and um, started setting up all of her photo shoots, doing all of that. And then it started going really well. Like we started working with the one and only like Lena. Mm. This is, was Plug Talk existent at that point? Not yet. I think we, had, we hadn't launched yet, but it was in its, you know, baby form. Maybe yeah. uh, Selena can get a, a hall pass for a Plug Talk appearance. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Steve, I will crazy. submit my paperwork. She's so hot. No? Yeah, yeah no. She's but one of the great baddies of our time. She really is. Yeah. She, she should be like. He's like, I'm not allowed to talk comment on this. I'm just sitting here awkwardly. No, Selena's a fucking, she's a boss ass bitch. I'll tell you that. See, so something totally unrelated to how hot she is. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not going to fucking. Not to make it awkward. I mean, you said it and yeah, so did yeah. she. <laughs> I'll stay quiet for that. But yeah, no, uh, the photo shoots were going great. And then Steve, I think, just gave me a chance and was like, yo, like, I want you to set up one of my videos. Mm-hmm. And that was the first video we did in Compton. Mm. We did like a, a yard sale, but everything was free. So you're a white kid coming out of Colorado. You're like, I need a clickbait idea. Let's exploit a bunch of people from Compton. Uh, <laughs> I mean, bro, at that point, you're like, you're looking for whatever can fucking yeah, yeah. get clicks. Right. And like, we were like, yo, let's do a free yard sale. And then mm-hmm. we're like, yo, how can we take it one step further? And that was the easiest way. Like, yo, let's make it edgy, a little bit like crazier. And yeah, I don't know. I, something about me, I always liked that fucking like kind of sweat that you get with that. Right. Like being fucking, you know, as you gamble, you're addicted to the sweat. You're not, you're not playing for money at that point. <sighs> but that's when it really, that's when you really are sweating it is when you can feel the money and it actually matters. And yeah. that's why you have to play for a lot to really be able to feel something. Exactly. Which is a problem in gambling, but like for the content, I was like, yo, I fucking love this shit. Was this the era of Steve like spending insane amounts of money on every video? Yeah. Which, was, which he didn't really like, did he have enough money to realistically be doing that at that time? Yeah. I mean, he was making money in everything. From the gambling streams and shit? Stuff like that. Mm. And then he was just putting everything that he made pretty much into the videos. Right. And like, bro, he didn't fucking, he was willing to do whatever it took to like make that video a banger. Like one thing that I don't think people understand is like, dude, that guy was fucking grinding mm. and literally putting everything he could into these videos. And I'm not going to lie to you, that was like some of the best moments of my life. Just working on that type of shit? Yeah, I loved it. And it's got to be like a weird feeling too because it's like your first time conceptualizing videos. Yeah. Too. yeah. You're, you're jumping into that role must have been like you want to do a really good job because you want to keep your job and sure. have them you know, promote you and stuff. But like from where your background as like a poker guy who was going to go to law school, did you feel just like you didn't know what to do in that moment? Like how did you figure it all out? All I knew was like it's one of those moments when you get thrown into that like you better figure it the fuck out mm. or I'm fucked. And if I'm fucked, then we're all fucked. But that's cool to like hire somebody and then just immediately demand that they be Mr. Beast. Like you have to conceptualize <laughs> a YouTube video that can get five or 10 million views I'd or whatever. I'd be so overwhelmed and I've been on YouTube for like seven years. I yeah. have to do. I think that's the best way to do it though. Yeah. Right. You, you put somebody like in anyone who's trying to work in LA or be like an assistant or you have to fucking grind. You have to do everything. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's the best way to do it because then I'm stressing the fuck out like 
don't want to lose that opportunity. Mm. Like part of you is like, yo, this is sick and I don't want to not be in this position. So you'll do whatever it takes. Like it's a fucking, it's a pretty cool thing, honestly. It's just when I hear some shit like that, like, oh, I'm, I just hire somebody and tell them to come up with ideas for crazy ass videos we could do. Cause my whole, my content has always been like, I'm just going to meet somebody interesting or like find out about somebody interesting and then just sit down and talk to them for two hours or whatever. Or, you know, we're going to like go pull up on somebody interesting. Oh, we're going to go to Blueface's house. Oh, we're going to Chief Keefe's spot, you know, whatever. It's like, but the idea of hiring somebody and just be like, think of something interesting for me to do is like kind of crazy. Well, that's well, like, that's just like so weird to well, me because I've always been the person who thought of the idea. Yeah, Mostly. but I mean, he came up with a lot too. We yeah. would bounce ideas off each other and it would just fucking, like me and him kind of saw eye to eye on his style mm. and it just would create better ideas. Because he wasn't trying to do like pranks in the same way that the Nelk right. guys, that's like their kind of signature. Yeah, right? he was never... He never liked know. the pranks, right? He did a few of them, but I think that this kind of style was like fit his personality way better. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so when do you switch from working with Steve to working with Nelk? How did that happen? So Nelk fucking... Launches the full send pod mm -hmm. and it fucking went crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like immediately. And it was Bob and Kyle for a while and Salim. And then Salim started doing his own channel. So naturally, like he had to do, he had to pit prioritize, right? And he's going to work on his own channel. Mm -hmm. And so they just asked me to do a couple. And I did a couple and it went really well. The first one I ever did was Kodak. Mm. And I just remember when they asked me to do that, I was like fucking sweating because I was like, <laughs> yeah. The, like, for me, like, I love rap culture. Like, mm. I just love rap music. And they kind of, like, leaned on me, like, yo, you better show up for this shit. And so there was a lot of pressure. I would be super nervous to interview Kodak, not because of the fact that he's super famous and everything. I've talked to him online and everything like that. But, like, just something about how volatile and unpredictable he seems. Like, he seems like he could just really do anything at any given moment. And that would freak me out. What do you mean by that? Like, dangerously? Not even like that necessarily. Just like, like say a, something. I feel like you could like storm off the podcast fuck, though, for no bro. reason. He's but just he's like funny. Yeah, but okay. I think you guys have a different style of podcast because you guys do kind of like normie style podcasting, where you're like you'll interview Lil Durk and just be like, "So do you have a girlfriend?" Or oh, like, is that shade? <laughs> like, is that shaded us? <laughs> no, I'm just saying like you know. But I'll interview Lil Durk and be like, "Okay, so you said this about this rapper in this song. Why do you not get along with him? And also, what about this thing? You know, like so it's like." A, a rapper like Lil Durk is like nervous about or w would be justified in being nervous to do an interview with me. Kodak, like when I talked to Kodak last about doing an interview it was because me and 1090 Jake were going to just, you know, talk to him about like prison politics with gang shit and everything because that's what 1090 Jake wanted to talk to him about. And like, you know, it's just like a very different style. I know. No, it's I. It's a lower pressure situation because like, yeah. yeah. rappers Well, dude, I had feel... to get fucking, I had to get blindfolded and picked up in a van to come to this location. Wait, what? Yeah. Where, where did you guys go? I, I didn't this see that This is such a disclosed location because you press all these guys. Like they, I had to get in a van. Oh, I oh, had to get here. Yes, come yes, here. yes, yes. You got to yes. be careful with that shit. And I made the security search you. Did they search you? No, they should have. That's funny that he, he picks and chooses why, who yeah, he wants why to Why am I not getting searched? That's actually kind of hurts me. <laughs> but I always wonder like, that. How do like, you know that I'm not fucking... He tried fucking... to search me the first time he met me. Really? <laughs> yeah, you don't remember? They were like, she's cool. She's cool. <laughs> I'm actually kind of offended by that. Like, why don't I get a pat down? No, I'm so glad. Just out of respect. Because in my mind, it's you like... You literally waved him off. You're like, yo, this kid's a pussy. Don't okay. worry about him. If this guy is a gang member who carries a gun all the time, search him. If it's Steiny, I mean, but the, this is racial profile. What if this I've, is what it looks what if like. I've pepper spray? <laughs> I, exactly. I don't want you to have that in here. <laughs> like, we, we got to keep a, an even temperature where at least if something happens, it's just fists being thrown. Okay, if I had one weapon on me, what do you think I'd have? Probably nunchucks. <laughs> yeah. Some, Probably a sigh. Some pepper spray? Or you know like, what a sigh is? No, what's that? Like a nut? <laughs> what, what's the throwing stars? <laughs> that's, that's a weapon. Yeah. Pro what's pretty a cool sigh? weapon, too. And if I bust one out in the middle of a street fight, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. You want to see a SAI? S -A -I? You yeah, know what? I kind of want to have my is. guy give you a pat down. I, I think it was in Ninja Turtles. Oh, no, dude. That's fucking... It's just a cool knife. What's her name? The Electra. It's just like a knife with like two little bonus knives sticking out of the side, like little titties. Yeah. No, no I'm not carrying that. Was one? Did one of the Ninja Turtles have it? Should have pulled up here with a fucking flamethrower. Something crazy. So wait, that's your mm. security that you came with? No, that's my day one. One of my best friends. But he also doubles the security. But I knew that, like, there'd be, like, a bunch of people here, so I didn't want to pull up solo. Mm. I wanted to have, like, one of my people, like, to set that, that, like, balance. I've had that happen multiple times where I pull up to a podcast alone and people act like I'm a total fucking freak. That's what I'm saying, Being dude. alone. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, I had to like, beg him to come. But it's weird for me too, because it's like, well, I do have like 10 employees who are at this building, but, but I didn't like tell them to come hang out with me while I do this other podcast. But ever since I've known you, you've never really liked going anywhere alone. You always would be like, come with me, come with me. Okay, in public. Okay. But if I'm just going to do a podcast. Do you have obviously to worry about I, that? Obviously, I'm not going anywhere in public alone because. I go places alone all the time. I don't care. I'm in danger. But does he have to? You have somebody with you, right? Well, you don't really go outside like that. I always got somebody with me. Yeah. Wait, can I ask you a question? Billy Western, what? When you guys do plug talk, do you wear the ring? <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> we, we both do. But you, okay. wear your, you wear yours too? <laughs> this scratches his dick, so I take it off. Oh, okay. Sometimes That's a pretty like, big rock. Thanks. He worst feeling. Top 10 worst feelings in life. You're fucking a girl. She reaches down to jam out on her clit like she thinks she's fucking DJ Scribble, but she got long ass Cardi B nails oh. and they start slicing your dick up. Or when oh, you like I've do never... this with the rings, it's bad. Yeah. yeah. Wait, does that happen with the long the long ass nails? I've, I've never had been girls with girl reach with down there and kind of just, I'm like, wait, you're trying to cut my cock off? He's definitely <laughs> told me off camera afterwards, like, yo, your nails. What the fuck? Yeah. I don't know. Like the, the long nails kind of like, I don't know if I could handle that. I don't think I could get nails that long either. Love Cardi, but those it's nails so are It's so impractical else. when you hear a girl texting and it's just... <laughs> Bro, that's my biggest pet peeve ever. I, ha- I cannot handle that sound. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think it sounds really cool. It's annoying as fuck. It's like you're trying to make a statement while you're texting. I don't like that. And it just kind of makes me feel think less of a woman that she's willing to have these stupid, like, ornamented things hanging off of her hand. Like, you can't go work in the field. You can't garden. You're sounding I mean, like you Sneeko. You can't even wipe your own ass. <laughs> you're sounding like Sneeko, bro. Hey, I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, you can't even wipe your own ass. Yeah. She made me wipe her own ass because her nails were so long. No. I've never gotten nails that long. This is my nail. <laughs> is that yeah. true or no? That's not true. No. <laughs> but you can imagine what that would be like. Well, yo, what's the cra- is there any crazy thing that's ever happened on Plug Talk? Situation like that? Mm, no. There's never been any shit or vomit. What well, about like arguments? Like once no, not really. But once this is for experience. One time a girl had a really stinky vagina. A what? And we had to power through it. A what? Stinky vagina. Ooh. Well, only one time though. Yeah, which is kind of crazy. You think not it would crazy. be crazy? Why does everyone think girls? Have no, you would think it would be more. Like, yeah, just, that's a one-time thing. How many you know, episodes like have you done? A hundred, probably. <laughs> like maybe a hundred. We've done over a hundred episodes, I think. But so, like, one stinky pussy. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Can you, can I ask you how do you balance making sure you're like for experience? Because I'm probably gonna run into a lot of like three ways. I feel like that will start happening. Yes. Yeah, I've only had. I actually haven't had any. Does Kyle let you have threesomes? Yeah, he would let me. I feel like he like probably has like really strict rules for you. Bro, he's <laughs> he's like the coolest boss of all time. I'm not gonna lie. I, okay, but I have a theory. Let's hear. Well, it. I've, I've kind of like heard people posit this. Like, I, actually, I think I heard Logan Paul talking about Kyle, and he was kind of like making Kyle out to like not be like a very like social person. That he's more like to himself, kind of in his own head. He's not necessarily the best networker and shit, which I thought was interesting because I haven't spent enough time around him to really like know him like that was it, is that accurate i don't know the context of when logan said that he said that on here no it was a while ago i just remember hearing bro logan. kyle's one of the best networkers well i don't want to like, yeah yeah that's what i'm saying he but also he's, kind of, i'm a horrible networker he's one of the smartest when it comes to content and stuff like right there's probably no one that like you know what i'm saying like same thing with you probably when you're like i have a good feeling about posting this or i know this will be a good idea if you run it through that guy no matter what he says, I go with his instinct because he's just fucking like he's so good at the game like that. I think like Logan was almost kind of putting him in the like savvy business genius, but like kind of sociopathic bucket. Yeah, I don't I mean, I don't know. So you know him to be a human being with actual emotions and feelings? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, well, you know I was only like around that? him that one time and he seemed pretty social. No, every time I've been around him, he's been totally cool. I was just like, I kind of heard. Logan and them like talking about him and it, it made me wonder I'm like does he have like this like mafia kingpin mind state about the content and everything nah bro he's a great dude honestly okay yeah I would tell you but you guys like how would you describe your relationship because it's like sometimes it, like when they hired you did they tell you that you were being hired to kind of be like the whipping boy for the operation because they kind of like give you a lot of shit <laughs> <laughs> the whipping boy I haven't gotten that honestly uh, we all spit in your mouth on set. Okay, whoa. Is that in the video? Yeah. Okay, yeah. You when did. you're doing stuff on camera, <laughs> if you have like a comedy troupe or like crew of dudes, it, it does kind of help to have somebody that you can really fuck with and it's not like looked down upon by But it's the only group. cool if that person's like actually really down. I kind of felt bad when we all spit in your mouth because you seem I like. I feel like I fucking volunteered for that, did I? 
you were not that interested in it. Yeah, I would not. No, Savannah Bond, don't spit in my mouth. <laughs> no, you were, you were. No, but it was know, seven maybe. in a row. Yeah, yeah you're know, not that savage. And then you at the end, savage, it was Gabe. Not that. No. At he, the end, okay, of- let's clear that up. He, his. This is crazy. His spit did not make it in my mouth. Okay. Just making that very clear. You ran away in He time? tried. So that's over the line. That's when it crossed the line. Well, because the, I don't know what he did the night before and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. He could have been with He's you. He's gay. He's homo- homophobic. So. I'm not it, homophobic, but I don't want Gabe spitting in my mouth. Don't they call it felching? I don't know. Isn't that, that is. when you stick a, 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 a straw in like a girl and like suck the cum out of her or something? Is that what that you is? You know about way too many gross no, things. You guys are t- way too experienced for me, bro. So I'm going to delete <laughs> sigh and I'm going to write felching. He spends so much time until like two in the morning watching random YouTube videos that you would never find unless you were Adam 22. Yeah, I'm is... watching like Alien versus the world and you're watching felching. And no, like... I don't watch movies. Felching is a sexual behavior about which virtually nothing has been written in the scholarly literature despite the fact that it appears appears to be a not uncommon practice among well, that is so not interesting. Felching is when a man fucks you up the butt without a rubber, he shoots his load and then plants his mouth on your anus and sucks out his own warm you could probably figure. That's 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 out of my league. <laughs> Definitely don't put a straw in my butt. Is that what you guys are doing tonight? No. No, she's going to check out a, a venue cuz she's th- she's throwing You're me a, a little, felcher? She's throwing me a birthday party. Will you come? I didn't get invited. Woo! It's in November. We haven't sent any invites yet. Yeah, we're just finding the venue. We're looking for the venue right now. I so would love to come. Very early stages. Yeah, no, I... He's I, turning 40. We have to do something big. 40. He's Holy shit, bro. Getting... Pushing 40, my oh, boy? What the fuck? Hopefully we can actually get people to come because we're going to have all these porn stars there. Probably most of which have already spit in your mouth. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll fucking go. <laughs> so, okay, what other, like... Like, how do you see your role at the Nell Full oh, Send yeah. Operation well, at this the point? Whole, what, whipping, boy. whipping yes, boy, whip, whipping boy. Like I that. mean, bro, like, uh, I kind of set myself up for some of those scenarios. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Like, I just fucking, it's like they would say it's a little too easy to fuck with me sometimes. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, like, we're all friends, and like, I get it. It's 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 good content. People like it, so I don't take anything like personally like that. It's like mm. it's funny for me too. There's been a couple times where I've been like, yo, is that a little too much? But at the end of the day, you just fucking laugh it off, and I don't give a fuck. Especially as the new guy, you gotta kind of. Yeah, exactly. Your it's, stripes by rolling with the punches, right? Exactly. You but you guys it. have been together like five years now, together, you know, as a team. Um, he hasn't been around that long. Right? No, five I think years? I've been with Nelk for three. two and a half, yeah. maybe oh. three. And then I've been like on camera for almost a year now. He's not of the OG wave. I'm not the OG. Real No Jumper fans will remember the Nelk video where they went to the No Jumper store and pretended to be SoundCloud rappers and tried to troll people and do pranks in line, but everybody already recognized them like crazy, so it didn't really work. Which that was, video has 9 million views. I actually watched it recently. Really? Yeah, yeah, but that was just like a bit. I remember them like realizing in the middle of that video, like, oh, we can't really like just do pranks where the, the people we're trying to prank are our exact demographic Audience, yeah. of people who watch our videos. Yeah, it didn't yeah. really work. No, I saw that one, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that was a good time. But um, Okay, so I have an assistant too, and we did like a pod together briefly. Like how does it go going from like being – an, an assistant or someone behind the scenes to like becoming someone in front of the camera. Did that become weird because suddenly your role is one thing and then all of a sudden you're like, you're, you're, you're the talent. Yeah. I mean, honestly, so when I started with Steve, I was more doing assistant producer mm-hmm. shit, but Bradley would always be there. And so with Bradley, I had an instant like dynamic with Brad. Cause he's like this big macho roid rage guy. I'm the <laughs> small, like I can piss him off. You know what I mean? So the dynamic kind of worked. So they just kind of started filming me. Mm -hmm. And then it started happening with Steve. So I kind of like got used to it. But once it went to Nelk, then it was like a whole different fucking lane that I was not, I I would say kind of prepared for. Because like the first video, I don't know if you saw the first video where I was like chained to the bed with Sophia. Yeah. I thought I was going on a real date with her. (laughs) And it was filmed the whole time. And we went back to the bedroom and I thought I was going to like, Fucci. What did you say, Fucci? Fucci? <laughs> what's, what's your fetish? Fauci. Fauci, her ass. Give me Fauci. In my head, I was like, damn, I'm going to have to get a straw and do whatever really Adam just explained. Somehow I don't think yeah. Sophia would be into that. Vaccinated nah. with cum. Yeah. yeah. Nah, so uh, <laughs> that happened, and then it just fucking, that was a really, like, big intro to, like, yo, this shit's fucking crazy. So you thought you were actually on a date that was going well with Sophia, and then... It turned out to be a prank, and that did, how did that like feel deep down inside? Did you think you were actually getting some like grade A woman that night? Yeah, I mean, just to give you an idea how good like they do these pranks, maybe we'll have to get you one time. That'd be fucking pretty funny. Yes, let's do I it. I think we have to, bro. 
I don't want to like, you can't. think about like, it too much. A, then I'll start planning against it. Like maybe like you come home and there's eight dudes in Lena. Oh, that wouldn't even bother Would that me. phase you or no? No, that's normal. <laughs> fuck, what could we do that? Be, grab his that's a problem. We call that Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, <laughs> fuck. 30. <sighs> 30. 30 dudes. Well, I, the, so the truth is that if you brought even a single soul to our home, it probably wouldn't be good. I I'll feel like Adam would be upset. so confused to go get his gun if you think he's going to save me from something. Oh my god, it's so never, cool. I, I've never had a guy over in our whole relationship. Nah, but so what confused. if I have my fucking throwing stars? Oh, if you're there with a sigh, I don't know. I'm yeah. be scared to shoot because what if you throw that thing at me? Yeah, ah. that might be an issue. But yeah, no, so we went to dinner and I fucking, I saw, I saw the cameraman when mm. I was in there. So he was walking out as I was walking in. And like, th th there's so fucking calculated like the first three weeks she had dm'd me so we talked for three weeks in the dms that's fucked up so i was like in the kitchen and i was like yo what's up kyle like is this are you fucking with me right now because like this chick's way out of my league and i don't know something feels off he's like nah bro i, I would never do that to you oh my god yeah. do you and think long term she's gonna be like the the cooler of the caller daddies I don't know. I think Alex. I don't know what's going on with that other one. They got that. I mean, Alex Earl. I never is, hear anything about it. He's now with Alex Cooper. Right. And she's like the hottest thing right now. So. So it is big. Yeah. I just don't hear about it. But to be fair, you're not I, following her. I think I only see Sophia when she's like in my friend's videos too. So that's yeah. enough to make me convinced that she must be doing great. The thing about Sophia, is she's hot. She fucking. She's she's funny, bro. The other one's pretty hot, right? They're both hot, okay. but I think the the other one's taking like the I'm gonna get married. Like settle down route, and Sophia's kind of like on the savage like. But Sophia's the one who ruined the whole thing, right? She was just like out here banging guys who were giving her financial advice. Yeah, something like that. I didn't get in. <laughs> I wasn't early enough for that. You don't remember I'm when Portnoy to. dropped the podcast? Bro, on, that was the on, best. That was insane, right? The best. That, I want to. I went quick. from knowing nothing about yeah. them to knowing so much in the course of like one evening because he dropped that. That Portnoy content with fucking destroying Suitman and Sophia. Yeah, is probably the best content ever. Right. Just that and Fousey, in my opinion. The Fousey, Fousey streams, like, those two are, like, neck and neck on what I was more engaged and entertained by. Yeah, I definitely paid way too much attention to that saga. Yeah, but anyway, so we went to dinner. I saw the cameraman. I knew something was up. And then, so I fucking was like, yo, I got to put on a little bit and act like a douche. Because I just, you just know, like, I, I don't want to make this boring. I kind of want to make it entertaining. Mm. And so we did dinner. But then she fucking, she was like, yo, let's go to, Let's go out. And so I chose the next two bars. So I knew that they couldn't have a camera there. Mm. And so we went and partied at two other bars. And then by the time we got to the hotel, I was like, yo, I'm fucking, I'm hitting this. <laughs> this. <laughs> like, yo, I actually might get laid. Wait, they weren't there at all? They didn't get back to the hotel with you guys? Like, no, they had two hidden cameras. Right. Uh, yeah. So and, I was like fucking drinking. And, and how, how close to sex did you get before... Uh, I got to handcuffed to the bed with her fully clothed on top of me. And so you actually thought this, this was just her fetish was to handcuff you. Uh, that was like kind of a red flag. I was like, yo, this is a <laughs> one night stand and you're handcuffing me and like talking about toys and shit. This like, is officially like a PG-13 movie once they handcuff you to the bed. This is not something that really happens to like anyone in real life. Bro, but I thought like, yo, this is LA. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's a podcaster. Yeah, she's a podcaster. Like Anything's maybe she, possible. Maybe she's in it. So I acted like, yeah, like I do this shit. Like handcuffed to the bed. I've been there, which Bro, I never have. Really? Yeah, which I probably should experience. Never had a girl do that to me. We've never done that. That's the how George George Costanza got all his possessions stolen on Seinfeld doing that. No. Yeah. Oh shit. I, forget, I didn't have any possessions. I forget the rest point. of the episode, but yeah, she handcuffed him to the bed and robbed him. What the fuck? So how long did you guys stay handcuffed and then they what? They just surprised you like, hey, it's a prank? No, nah, so I was handcuffed for probably like 30 seconds, blindfolded. And then I felt the weight shift because Gabe came in. Mm. She went to the bathroom and then he was fully clothed on top of me. And I was like, yo, <laughs> something's not right. And then I took off the blindfold and I was like, what the fuck? This is Gabe. Uh, and I mean, after I was more... I don't even know. I think I was more upset that I like kind of like because you talk for three weeks. Yeah, that's, like, that's kind of a long part. time. That's a lot of time. <laughs> like, Especially like, a chick like her because you got to be thinking in your head like, "Fuck!" Like, are we gonna be dating? Like, are we bro, gonna keep hanging out? It's gonna be really every cool. scenario went through my head. 
And yeah, so that's why it kind of hurt a little bit more. Right. You should have like if you should have told her like, hey, I did. like you gotta fuck me anyway. Well, no, I hit I hit her up the next day. I was like, yo, I thought we kind of vibed. And she she's like a professional, right? She's like, oh, it was for the it was for the video, and I was kind of hurt by that. Damn, it's for the. video. But you guys are like friends now. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I like to do content with her. She's funny as fuck, and uh, we have a good vibe. Okay. And I'm still trying. Still I'm not trying. giving up on that. Yeah, yeah, never give Why? up. Why? I can't now. What, maybe you get on what Liver King is on, like the steroids and stuff. I feel like then maybe, like, that's probably more her type. Okay. Why? You don't think of. <laughs> no, you look great and everything. I just feel like funny she, is enough. She probably wants, like, a fucking barrel Macho of a man. man. Yeah. No, she wants someone who will show her, her bank, his bank account. And yeah, that's what she says to you. That's all she cares about. You haven't seen that, that uh, video that she made, like, where she goes, she tells every guy that she's dating, let me see your bank account on the first date. Really? She wants to know if she likes yeah. the number. I don't think. My phone was dead when she asked. <laughs> I now hate her. Yeah, I know. That's why Sneeko went in on her, bro. Because he's like, yo. He went th- too far. This is his words. You're 31. You've been ran through. How the fuck are you going to ask me about my bank account? How does he know she's been ran through? Because she's 31? Sneeko mm-hmm. doesn't. He just What else shit. is she doing on her? That's That actually that's a, might be a good she point. She didn't let Steiny fuck? Well, but okay, yeah, but is that is that surprising by the way? <laughs> I'm just saying that's just no, but I mean, like, fuck. why are you guys like so like surprised? No, I'm by just that? saying, how could she be ran through if she's not letting everyone fuck? Okay, but like the why red I, the red pill also, definition. Also, how is 31 a, a diss? Think about the red the red pill definition of ran through. Brittany Renner, who's like in her 30s or some shit, like she is a, she's ran through because she fucked 35 guys. To me, 35 guys as a grown ass woman is nothing. To the guys who are like really obsessed with body count, thirty five is a shit. How do you feel about thirty five? Do you believe that? That she only fucked thirty five guys? Yeah. I, I mean, feel like it's a random number. Why would she make it up? If I'm her, I'm definitely lessening the number. Why would you tell the whole truth? But who knows? Maybe she is being But thirty five you know. is such like a like like thirty seven. For me, that's more believable. Like thirty five is like that like middle number. Because you know it's saying? divisible by five. But exactly. to get to thirty seven, you gotta cross thirty five. No, I don't know, but I I don't think thirty five is thirty seven is a prime number, so therefore it's impossible. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's why, but it's you'd be more thrown off by thirty seven than thirty five. I really yeah, I don't trust girls whose body count is a prime number. That's what I'm saying. It just seems really fishy. It, that's why I yeah. didn't believe it. Do you ask girls you're dating their body count? Uh yeah. And Are you what serious? what is your quota? This is not this should not be normalized. Yeah. Okay, but if I'm like three to six months in dating, oh, okay, but like, I, yeah, yeah, I want to know. At some point, you can have night one. It's like, yo, her? if you have 150, okay, but you, you really want to figure 50. that out six yeah. months in? Do you want to fall in love? Well, it's not appropriate to ask before that, is it? I'm not gonna first date that. But you're are you right. gonna leave her if she tells you she has 150 bodies and then you guys are six months in? No, but it'll change my opinion. Oh, but that's so stupid. I don't know. It just is something for me where it's like, yo, if you're you're more experienced than me. Like 150 is a lot. What's your body count? Probably around 100. But 150 is a, for a female, is a bigger number. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think 35 is almost comparable to like 75 for a guy. But how old is Brittany Renner? Because that to me is a big part of this. Also, what's the ratio? Oh my God. Wait, what do you <laughs> mean? Shout out to my hardcore whatever fans. Now, we went on the whatever podcast. And I saw that. This <sighs> girl just kept saying, like, it's not about how many people you fucked, it's about how many people tried to fuck you and then how many you actually did it. So the ratio. She's like, I'm, I'm so super scared. hot. So my ratio is like, everyone tries to fuck me and I don't fuck everyone. That's so therefore. Every chick. But isn't this like the craziest thing ever that we should do away with body count and just focus on the ratio? I do think the body count thing is stupid though why do you don't think that's kind of important because it does change like if there's a girl that has slept with 10 31 she's okay. 31 her body counts 35 no i'm i'm letting that slide one a year um but if you're fucking <laughs> one since year. birth <laughs> if you're 31 and you've slept with 15 dudes or you've slept with 75 that's it's just like your values i think are a little different do you want a virgin no, I'm not like one of those guys that's like, oh, I need a virgin. But like, I would probably, if I'm going to settle down, prefer a girl who's not been with as many as 75. But maybe your sex is better because she's more experienced. Okay, then I'll give in for that. How about <laughs> this? How about you got a little sister and she's coming of age and she asks you, how long should I make a guy wait before I sleep with him? This is your sister, so you really care Jesus about her Christ. future and how well she does in life, and you really two years, 
two, two years. Two years, yeah. <laughs> yeah no one's two gonna fucking stay years. With you her come near my sister, years. it's two fucking years, or we're gonna have an issue. Oh, would you stay with a girl who held out for two years? Fuck no. Okay. Hell no. I hung out with a girl one time who told me that we needed to hang out 36 times before she would sleep with me. It was some arbitrary fucking number like that, 36 or okay, like but 29 or some shit. Does any part of you like kind of respect that? Yeah, totally. 36 times. Is That's what that, that was. What was weird about it is that it was like there is no fucking like you are pretty hot, but there's no possible way that I'm hanging out with you 30 plus times to fuck you. But if I was giving again, like my sister who just turned 17 or some shit, and she's asking me how many times she should have to hang out with a guy before I sleep with him, my opinion would be like make this guy wait like multiple weeks and like really hang out with you before you give that shit up because that's like the only power you have in a relationship For as sure. a woman is to be able to like really like hold out on the one thing that you know guys love to just do and then leave of course well that's what i'm saying like what guy is ever gonna pass up a hitting it on the first night right so if a girl does it you have more like i don't know like i'd rather settle down with a chick that made me wait three or four nights than the first night three or four still kind of light yeah because you could hang out three or four times in a week and but then yeah like, yeah right well, that's <laughs> what i'm doing i'm not gonna <laughs> fucking space that over right right I mean, it, but also we fucked like the first night and we're married. So just, just right. saying, it but after we fucked the first night, it's not like we we're like hanging out nonstop after that, because, okay, if we had just hung out that night and at the end of the night, if you had said, Hey, I had a great night, kiss on the cheek. I'll talk to you later. Then what do I have to do? I have to now make up my mind. Do I like her enough to like wine and diner and hang out with her again and like presumably not get ass again? If I do that and I hang out with you for a couple of weeks without fucking you, I, that is basically just such a gigantic signal that I really like you. And as a girl, that is the only power that you have to basically figure out whether a guy is just going to fuck you and leave or if he's going to fuck you and stick around. But girls are horny too, man. They want to fuck. I know. I that's, get that's that. the problem. That's the, the thing problem. that I, I'm i not agreeing with Adam, but I am. <laughs> I'm not are. taking it's sides because okay. we're all friends here, but I, I will say- that like if a chick makes me wait like two or three nights, then my attitude is like, yo, I gotta turn this shit up. Like we gotta go on a way sicker date. Mm. Like I gotta fucking really impress this chick. What's the good, the best date you've done for a girl? Fuck. Um, and also, are you with a girl? Because you kind of said you were seeing someone when I, when I did your podcast a couple months ago. Um, when's this coming out? <laughs> You're not sure. Maybe like a week or two. A week. Okay. Probably. No, I'm single. <laughs> You're single. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, but uh, I think I don't know. That's a good question. Fuck, I'm not that romantic. Do you send flowers? I have. Venus of floor. Shout out Venus. What is it? Adam uses that company as well. I need a sponsorship from you guys straight up. But um, Yes, I do. I've sent those. those are, dude, those are the... Any guy that needs something to get a chick like excited, send him the box of flowers. But I, I hate how normalized it is to spend like hundreds and hundreds of dollars on flowers or anything. Like the idea that if you like a girl that you're supposed to just spend a bunch of money on her, like that did not exist in my fucking mind even like at the time when I met you, you know, like like you were the first girl that I ever bought a designer bag for. Like, at, like how many I dates in were you? I think we were more like a year in. Fuck, a year and you did that. We met like in like, and I was shocked that you got that for me. He got me like a little Gucci bag, but it was a my year birthday. In? It was my birthday, so it was like a year after we met. Yeah, we Probably also six had six months of dating. We had a lot less money then too, so yeah, it's like see, now I've done, yeah. I've done that yeah. three weeks in. What? Jesus yeah. Christ! What? Then what are you letting her like get excited for? That's the excitement. Well, then where do you go from there? Yeah, like you got. You set the bar really high in the beginning. And then you no. Go, yeah. <laughs> because then she's gonna say you haven't bought me a designer bag in a couple no, of weeks. No, because then I think that they spend more time with me, and then they actually get to like me for me, and so it fucking balances out. But then you could like trickle off the the money and exactly. the, the possessions. Flexing. But I feel like that might not work that good. No, because girls are gonna date you for three weeks, get their bag, and leave. <sighs> I haven't had that happen yet. Never. No. Okay. Would you buy a girl like a twenty thousand dollar gift just to fuck? Fuck no. <laughs> That's no. But I feel like that kind of shit is sort of normalized at this point. That it's like girls literally are expecting a guy to buy, and maybe I'm like talking about sort of like in certain sectors of like the hip hop world because I hear what these girls say to each other on podcasts and shit, and it's very much like, oh, like he got to buy me a bag to fuck. Like they're they're either explicitly saying that or kind of implicitly saying that. And to me, it's like, oh, I will I will fuck, like if I was single, I will fuck the most normal women on earth to avoid hanging out with these chicks who think that because they have a dope BBL that I have to like buy them shit in order to just be in their presence. But there's a lot of like hot chicks who like, they understand their value and they're willing to use it to basically just exploit dudes. And, and the BBL costs money. So and I'm, gotta so, get it back. I'm so, so against this. But like, 
pain. That's almost like fucking a hooker, in my opinion. Yeah. If you have to spend that kind of money to fuck on the first night or whatever, fuck the first time, then that's right, dude. That's a hooker. I would get so little joy out of that. I don't get joy. No, it's not even sad. Like, how do you, how are you satisfied after that? Fucking go for free is the whole point. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to. Be Otherwise, on. yeah, I would get a hooker. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm trying to focus on more. But I, that's what I'm on right now, by the way. But I feel like in your role, the kind of girls that you're meeting are like salt to the earth. Like I go to college in Kentucky types. Like I'm at a happy dad meet and greet. <laughs> like, you, like you just meet like hella normal chicks through that kind of stuff. But then you also are in like clubs and you're, you're hanging out with like the girls that hang out with six nines girlfriend. And these <laughs> are just like the most gold digging bitches on earth. Okay, right? So that's a good point. But I guess th with the girls, like they see the, like the lifestyle. So their expectations are pretty high. Right. Mm. So if I like hit up a girl or I meet a girl, like she's expecting we're going to the club table best night of my life type shit because right. that's what they see on social media yeah. in the videos and stuff. when i'm yeah. just trying to be a genuine guy like hey like let's let's go to top golf like let's get to know each other you know what i'm saying we've never done top golf by the way i really want to try it what yeah. is top um, golf you get Jesus top Christ. while you're playing what's, what's, golf? A, what's a fucking date night that you guys here? do on? no but we yeah, did mini course. golf but what what is top golf it's like a it's, it's driving range type like you're not putting you're hitting like oh. a yeah, and like there's like little holes that you try and hit. I never played golf, so I don't really. It's like totally. it just looks fun. What's like a romantic? Do you guys still do the romantic dates? Or are you at that point where you got? We're slacking big time. Yeah, very bad. I'm taking her to Little Ethiopia tomorrow. Where's that? Little Ethiopia on Fairfax. It's just like an area with a bunch of Ethiopian. It's like on the way to the airport if you take the streets. But yeah, we always. Is that, that like we, a romantic thing? I mean, we just always said we want to try Ethiopian food because it looks really good, and we've never tried it in our seven years together. So Literally, we're finally doing this. Like twelve years ago, this girl and a few of my friends ended up going to a, the Ethiopian restaurant. It's fucking amazing, and I've been thinking about going back ever since. And I finally actually picked a date, and we're going. Yeah, to I'm totally happy to just try new food for every date. Like I don't need a lot. So yeah, that's. So you have a good one. She likes a nice, fun little. Don't experience. take me to the club. I like Don't take me oh, to the she, table. Yeah, yeah. We went to that. a blue face show on on last Friday and didn't have the best time. Why? Because it was downtown. We were standing around. Did you just have blue face on a, here? A venue. Yeah, but like right after. Ooh, so he said he was going to do a. Oh, there was a fight. I was terrified. There was a girl fight, like really bad. Popped. I was like hiding in the back. Yeah, I don't want to be in scene. those kind of environments. No, it's on my scene. But we were like backstage at the show, spent a little time on stage of the show. For me, it was good because I'm like filming like social media. We filmed the vlog, etc. But then from her perspective, it's like, but but you would have been equally miserable if we went to the club. Yeah, but at least at the club, I could have danced. The bad thing about being backstage is that the speakers face the crowd, so yeah, the sound quality always good. sucks. And also, I don't like being around the girls who are like fighting to be on stage. And then I'm just like, I don't even want to be here. I but, just want to be. Okay, but we had a weird experience that honestly, like. I feel I, like I'm kind of like the therapist of the council. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, La I got last personal too. thing. But I feel like Wait, we, why? we had this weird moment because I, I, I would rather I'm just take into you. Pause. But uh, okay. no, but there was a girl, super pretty girl, was backstage. And we both, I think, like probably noticed her at some point and just like kind of wondered who she was or whatever, but she, we didn't say anything to her. And then she like kind of while Bluefish is performing comes up and like takes a photo smiling with me and Lena. But she like kisses me on the cheek, but didn't even say hi. She kissed me on the cheek for the photo. We didn't even find out her name. We didn't figure out who she was. That's the weird like, thing too in these environments. There's like very few girls and none of them talk to each other. It's like they're all kind of threatened by each other. Like, oh, who are, why are you what, here? Are I'm trying concert? to be close to, like in all rap concert environments, festivals, whatever. It's always like none of the girlfriends talk to each other. None of the baby mamas talk I to each other. I just feel like you, if she had actually like introduced herself to you, you probably would have been hyped because you'd be like, oh, I have a new friend. A girl who yeah, hangs no, out at I know. Instead, shows. she just came over and kissed me on the cheek for a photo in the and left. Th to me, that just like encapsulates how weird having cloud is is that people are interested in being around you for like really you know like that like that kind of reason but then they don't like really want to connect with you because like yeah. if, she, if she had like had a real full-blown conversation with Lana Lowe, would probably be stoked yeah and said know. there was just a fucking full-on fight do you feel like you're the, well that was a separate thing. sort of afraid of people now that you have if you're like a public figure in a way uh, I'm sure I definitely get a little bit a little of anxiety bit. yeah but Everyone that I've met in person is super fucking cool. No like, I don't mind to stop and talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had, like, a weird experience. No one's like, hey, I really, I really like your videos. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's always dudes. Like, I don't ever have chicks going up to me, really. But do you have, I'm like, a weird on. fear that you're going to meet a girl, fall in love with her, and then you're just going to bring her around Kyle, and then Kyle's just going to dig her out? 
Yeah, I do. That I don't, why are, you, like level why are you fucking trying to do that to me? No, right? I mean, I've been there before, too. I've had like a girl I was trying to fuck, and I brought her okay, around so a rapper, and all of a sudden she's hanging out with the rapper. I, Kyle's definitely been with chicks, and then they've come around. Like, when you travel the cities, you have that group. Love some leftovers. Yeah, so I've, I've fucking had some table crumbs before. Right, but, but, but like... If you came around with a girl and you were in love with her, is is Kyle gonna like give her a pass and like not dick her down? Yeah, no, he has respect for. Well, that's nice though. Yeah. Well, why? But like, Adam would not have that much. What respect. if she's just fucking <laughs> your girl? What if she's that's just into me asking. though? Why do you think that like she's only trying to get to him? It's just hypothetical. Like, what if she's trying to sort of climb the ladder? She wants to get to Dana after him. Fuck. I hope that doesn't happen, dude. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know. That's definitely a scenario too, right? But wouldn't you have to be kind of proud of her? Like, damn, she went from Steiny to Kyle to Dana White. No, I'd feel terrible. That would hurt me. He has feelings. I, I, I do. But have you'd feelings. have to like sort of respect her as like on some G shit. Like, damn, she did that. Yeah, she I mean, the it'd probably hurt a little bit, but I mean, mm. you gotta respect the hustle, bro. You gotta respect the hustle, even yeah. when it's your heart getting broke in the yeah, process. For sure. Fuck so it. so at what point do you say to Kyle, like, yo, I want to start my own podcast and I want it to basically be me going on dates with girls and like trying to figure <laughs> out to strategize my sex life? <laughs> yo, what the fuck? <laughs> One night with Steiny. Yeah, no, he, he actually told me, he was like, dude, I've, if you want to do your own thing, like I understand. And I think that in this space too, just kind of like my come up and stuff, like doing my own thing, it just, it gives, it gives you respect from people when you mm -hmm. can show like, yo, I can do my own kind of content. I don't have to just do milk videos. I don't have to just do the full send pod. Like I can really do something on my own, but he believed in me. And honestly, like I love doing that kind of content cause there's no really pressure. And then you have like the creative control and you can kind of steer it the way that you want it to go. Yeah. Cause I mean, it is kind of directionless. Cause I was watching the one with you and uh, Bradley and what's her name? Sarah. Um, Safari. Safari. Yeah. And then the girl Kaylee, who we met at Bradley's gym opening, she was in it too. And I'm like, so Steiny just like <laughs> got like two hot chicks that he, he met, like hanging out with them. And then he's got sort of like Bradley moderating like them sort of like, you know, and you're, you're just trying to figure out like where you fit in here. Like, am I, are you guys like maybe down to have sex with me like one day? Okay. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> fuck. I did not watch it. That's but. not accurate? Oh. No, that's, I mean, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> it depends who's on it. But no, I mean, dude, it's like people like to see like me fucking with chicks and like if I'm hitting on them or if I'm like joking with them, it's whatever. Nothing ever, well, our episode was the only time something escalated. But other than that, <laughs> like, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, nothing ever happened. But like, oh man. Do but I think it's funny, bro, because it's like, you see it too. You're on TikTok. Like you see a lot of the clips. Like oh, yeah. when you interact with like these popping girls, people love that shit. Right. So do, do you think you're ready for a fitness chick? I've tried, bro. Fitness chicks, I think are it right now. Really? I don't think I'm in good enough shape. Like you said, like, even though it was kind of rude, because I think I've lost some weight and I'm yeah, are you doing you the fine, thing yeah. that Kyle's shirt's doing? Tight where, as fuck. Does my like... arms all look decent? <laughs> I'm serious. This was the tightest shirt I had. You look great. Okay. I've always been in love with you. No, but when <laughs> I was at that gym opening and being around all these like hot gym chicks, like I've never felt more inferior in my life. Like That's what I I'm just saying. I look at myself so critically while looking at all these people who clearly have like taken their body. They to, like live there. Yeah. Yeah. But bro, but it makes me this. feel like shit having a fucking gut and If you quit your job and decided that you were gonna live at Zoo culture you would also look like that why do you have a gut though because of drinking because your eating habits we don't drink at all just got to get my diet and exercise together i guess i'm always just like wrist crackers every once in a while that's it don't wrap me out but <laughs> no i'm like i, I kind of like go through swings where like you know I, I i'll eat super fucking healthy for like six months and like work out really hard and then all of a sudden i'll like fall off for a few months and I'm, i've never really been able to like a hundred percent get myself to full Bradley Martin can do But I mean, like, your life is partying and you're on the road a lot. So yeah, I feel that's like an extra level that I would But I, that's why I like the gym chicks. Because they live a healthy ass lifestyle. None of those girls that you see at the gym, they're not fucking drinking, bro. They don't? No. no. Because, okay, we used to go to a personal training gym in Beverly Hills where there was a bunch of chicks like this. And I remember the owner of the gym who ended up becoming a pretty big scumbag or being a scumbag the whole time. He telling me, like, these girls do coke, these girls are drinking, they're crazy, they will fuck 10 guys, yada. <laughs> like, he's making me think, like, oh, maybe the gym chicks are actually fucking... Okay, that's you my kind of gym. Muscle. What gym is that, really quick? Don't Sorry. go there, no, yeah. Well, yeah, but if you're in your early 20s, you can still pack on weight and do a bunch a of coke. Woman, and I feel like it's so hard to build muscle that if you're doing all that shit, it'd be, like, impossible. No, but that's why I like it, because then it's like, you, I don't have to, we don't have to go to the club. We can do something exactly. healthy. Yeah. yeah. So do you not like the club? 
I used to a lot, but this yeah. shit, you do it a lot, and you're just like, yo, I can't do this Why shit. Why do you always go to the club? Uh, we promote Happy Dad. Oh, for that um, mostly? So a lot of the clubs carry it, and it's just like promotional. We have a good time too, but, you know, they carry it, so we want to promote. I need to go to the club to promote No Jumper. Yeah, there you go. Right. Well, Why don't I use that excuse more? Well, no jumpers. You don't have an alcoholic just, beverage. Yeah, like yeah, alcoholic beverage. No, I have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, you can go get a table. Everyone can drink. Put a big no Some people don't sign. drink. Everybody listens to podcasts. That's true. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how you're gonna do that at the club, but you could try. Maybe wear a no jumper tee and just. I mean, people people know you. Bro. Yeah, yeah, I'll roll up with a whole squad. Twenty big ass dudes wearing no jumper shirts. That's a look. I need to be in the club doing shit like that. Have fun. Go. Yeah. That's, they're doing it. But you're bro, your beverage. Your life's a really little good. different now. She's like. Oh, they make more money. No, you're just, you're married. If we had an alcoholic kids. beverage, I would say, yeah, let's go to the club and promote it too. No, yeah, like I, I changed my life. <laughs> I decided to like leave all the, the raging behind. When did you leave that behind? Uh, New Year's Eve of 20, 20, 2018. Oh shit, something <laughs> happened that night. We just got really fucked up and we woke up the next day and we were like, fuck this. The crazy thing though is that we were sober for like almost exactly a year before we had a kid. Yeah. When like we stopped partying and then all of a sudden, boom, we had a kid a year later. Like what? we, but we watched hella Netflix during that year. That's good. You know, we watched a we lot of shows. We were just so shows. boring in our lives. Like we, on Halloween, instead of going to a party, we took his nephew's trick or treating. We we're kind of like, why don't we just have kids? What the fuck are we doing? We're already hanging out with kids. Yeah. So yeah. And we love each other. Well, that too. <laughs> Forgot about has that. Has the has this internet stuff? How how does that affect the relationship? I always date chicks that I think uh, are more like. Not in the game. I think it's better for me. It may have been a little complicated at moments, but for the most part, now we're. we're it's, it's, I think it helps so that we were both uh, in, I don't know, very early stages in our career when we oh, met. Yeah. I was like, talking about recent internet stuff, but she's talking about. Oh, yeah. No, talking about dating. Shit. Oh, you know, recent shit. Oh, yeah. okay. When you date a girl, you don't want her to be like a public figure. You yeah. Want, yeah. Okay. I don't know. It just, I feel like it causes issues. But what if dating you turns her into a public figure? I don't he doesn't don't, want a poster. He's I don't me. like to do that. Yeah, it's just dude It causes so many fucking issues like that's when you're talking about climbing the ladder That's how you introduce them to the ladder mm. But what is if he, I don't even make that available what, it, you Sign her to a contract that says that she's not allowed to fuck anybody else for five years <laughs> <laughs> No, we've already talked to lawyers No, but like I've talked to or like I was listening to academics talk about it And it's like he has this problem that he dated one girl Selena Powell who ended up like exposing him and fucking taking all his shit to the internet and everything. And then he said, basically every girl he'll date after that, they all use that same technique that as soon as it starts going bad, they just like rush to Who the, what's up with that. Who is she exactly? She's all, everywhere. Didn't you have her on here? Yeah. I fucked, fucked her, her the other week. day. I, but, uh, I fucked her the other day. Yeah. I was not scene. involved. Yeah. She was, you could do one on one. That was, a, that was a hall pass. for. That was like one of the only, yeah. That well, was your trade off. Really fair trade. Yeah. yeah can, what was the trade? So you got to do the Jason love. And then I got to fuck Selena Powell. Yeah. yeah. But was that like the doesn't seem fair, did she but. get to pick who? <laughs> no, she hit us up to do plug talk. And I was like, that's all you. So it's like one just like easy one that just like everybody, all the fans like she was one of our most viral episodes ever. It okay. Was like her getting fucked by this other dude. So like we figured people would probably she also doesn't like girls. So I was like, I don't want to fuck a girl who doesn't like girls. what uh, yeah. is that ever going to happen again? Like the whole like her hall pass type thing. We're working on a upcoming content oh. series revolving around that very concept and he's pimping me out so it sounds how like do you guys i don't like to use <laughs> sex worker language in such a way but how do you pick who there will be a, a, a whole series Am I of on content there or no? I, I mean you, you, Bro, you I, might be in the running we don't know there's like gonna be a contest do you want to be a part of it <sighs> fuck it depends what the contest is i might not fuck in would you rather fuck steiny or bradley martin can i have them both Oh, God. I can't do that with Brad at the same time. Nightmarish answer. <laughs> I don't want to be mean to Bradley. And I also like Steiny. You know, so did I win? That first time together we had was really good. So. Oh, my God. Wait, wait. Who, would you choose me? I'd want to choose you, but I'd also yes. want to choose Bradley. <laughs> I'm like so nice. She I don't want to hurt anyone. Enough. I don't want to hurt anyone. Wait, so she she's choosing Bradley, huh? crew. She no, she's choo you're choosing Bradley. Throw some filmers Just in there as well. choose me one time. Let me get that dub. Okay, I gotta make up for the Sophia vlog or whatever you guys did. That was really sad. Who do you think would win in a fight? You or Bradley? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That shit's a fucking Brad. Do you not appreciate him? Uh, like He's kind of like earned meme status with that Bro, in a that way shit, that he didn't really have that before. Sometimes I sit there and I'm like, how's this shit so vi Are you ever like, yo, this Street Fights shit went so crazy? Are you just like, it's, it's like 
it's a funny question, but he's run it so many times, but it still goes crazy every time. Yeah. Some things are just like that, where it's just like, it becomes annoying to you as an individual, like me with the cuck jokes and shit. It's like, and the body count thing. I feel like, even the are body we not count done thing. with yeah, this yeah. conversation already? Like, yeah. we've been like you forever. as the creator are on your last leg of like, I feel like I can never have a fucking conversation this boring about something as stupid as body count or, or the cuck thing or whatever. But then the audience is just like, no, 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 no. Give they us more. Give us shit, more. Huh? Give us more. Yeah. Yeah. No, Brad, uh, he, he's gotten pissed at me a few times. Whereas... I saw one where he was fucking screaming at you, dude. Which you were fucking dressed time. up like an Amish guy. Yeah, I know. That's that's actually the biggest clip on Full Scent Pod. Yeah, what, what was that? Why, why did he get so tr triggered? I think he just likes to take his anger on me. But, I mean, the thing with Brad is, like, he's he's actually a really good dude, bro. Yeah. Like, he's a, he's a great guy. Uh -huh. But I think that sometimes if you push him enough, then he will get pissed off. Right. He's never actually, like, hurt me. Are I mean, you fucking he, with him? Or, like, I don't see the clip. Yeah, I was fucking with him. But, he, I mean, he has he's, like, maybe choked me once. I wonder... What did you? What could you have possibly done to earn choking from Bradley Martin? Um, we did a uh, bro test outside of his first Zoo Culture. Okay. And I told all the fans that they had a free membership <laughs> at Zoo Culture, <laughs> and there was like forty, and then that's when he grabbed me by the back of my neck and he was like, "You shut the fuck up." Yeah. Do so you that, really think it's roid rage, or that's just something you guys say? I don't know. I mean, you guys never got him to have a serious conversation with steroids on camera. No, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I've never brought that up, but I mean. What do you think? Well, I've tried to talk to him about it on camera. And what did he say? Uh, the first time. He's natural. He I made thought. me edit it out. Is he not natural? Uh, I, I, I think more plates, more dates may have had a video about him at one point, right? Really? I think so, right? Yeah, I don't know. I, well, I, I, don't know. I, I asked him about it in probably 2018. And yeah. He asked me to edit it out of the podcast. He, on No Jumper? Yeah. And then I asked him about it recently on his podcast. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he edited it out of that podcast as well. So. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he is, maybe he's not. Right. But. So w why is he not on the Full Send podcast anymore? I um, asked him this question as well when I was on there. Yeah, I mean, honestly, bro, like, I love, like, he's one of my favorite people to film with because we have a good dynamic, uh -huh. like I said. Uh, but that stuff with me, like, the Full Send pod is, they kind of tell me, like, yo, you're going to do, this guest is coming up, this is who we have booked, you show up, or I'll try and go get somebody, I get their approval. But when it comes to that stuff, I'm not really, like, involved on that. Kyle's not letting you be privy to these sort of decisions? Uh, yeah, I guess. But it's also, like, that's – I don't make those decisions. Yeah, I guess you're right. Like, it's never – that's never been something where it's, like, up to me. Mm. They kind of – I just – you know, they tell me what they want me to do, and I just do it. I kind of felt for him because he seemed, like, genuinely confused. Like, he didn't know when I asked him. I, I wish I had an answer for you. I really don't. Are mm. you guys still cool? Yeah. Brad's Brad, – like I said, Brad's a great guy, and I, I – at the end of the day, like, Kyle knows what he's doing, and I don't even know if it was a Kyle decision. I think maybe there's just something else where it's just like, yo, maybe we can do this with just me and him. Well, I mean, I can speak from experience is that I had a co-host on the podcast, and I wanted to, like, have him still be part of the brand, but I wanted to remove him off one podcast. Yeah. And his ego got hurt so bad that he basically, like, left and convinced a couple of the other hosts to leave with him, and it was this whole fucking big thing. And it was yeah. all just from this one host not being able to handle the fact that, like, our dynamic was shit and that, like, I just needed to keep working on the podcast, you For know? sure. Well, you see, bro, like, it's that's actually common on a lot of fucking podcasts. But, His yeah. hosts come and go. Mm. So, like I said, I don't really know what really happened there, but I love Brad. He's a great guy. I love doing content with him. Like, he's come on my show a few times. Mm -hmm. So he's a good dude. Right. But I don't make those decisions. You don't feel like he's trying to stand in the way of you getting with some of these girls on the on the show? I mean, I feel like the was... thing about Brad is like, dude, like, I hate to fucking admit this, but like, we've gone out in Miami and there's been girls that have like called me over that I thought, and they'd say, can you introduce me to your friend? Right. And that actually absolutely hurt me. Right. But it, it does happen. Like chicks like Brad, he's a fucking macho yeah, dude. He's like six, five and fucking gigantic. He's fucking huge, bro. Yeah. But they ask you to introduce him? Yeah. They did it one time at Marion and, and, uh, the smoking hot, like, like a uh, light skin chick. She was right. so bad. I was like, what the fuck? Like, does, he, I, does he fuck hoes? I don't know. He's so secretive with his shit. He is, huh? Yeah, I don't know I don't what know his deal who is. he bangs at all. <laughs> nah, but I think he, he tries to keep his life, like his like girlfriend stuff, pretty private. 
Which well, he's I smart because you know that anything that you contribute on the podcast or otherwise, they're going to try to figure out ways to make content about it, right? Of course, exactly. So he probably knows that. Like I've said, like having a having a relationship with what I do, bro, has been like the most difficult fucking thing to maintain in my life. This is probably like the number one time in your life that you don't want to be in a relationship, realistically. Uh, like mid twenties. Yeah, mid. <laughs> what are you a girl? Why are you hiding your age? No, it's just like uh, people like to make jokes pushing thirty. Like I'm mm. not pushing thirty. <laughs> I'm 32 Pushing and I You're not gonna. You will. Gonna make you me will feel hit bad. 30. I'm about to hit 40. Yeah, I know. Is that scary or not? Nah? I mean, the way I feel is like I feel like I've lived so much throughout all these years that even to have made it to 40 is like holy shit. I feel like I'm retired already. Like I yeah. can't even believe that I made it. Yeah. This long. There's How long so do you want to do this for? I don't know. I kept thinking about that when I was in Hawaii, just hanging out on the beach, and I was like, you know, could I ever just like retire away and just like live in Hawaii? And then I was like. Maybe in 10 years. And then I was like, in 10 years, your daughter is going to be like 13 and she's probably going to need you around. So definitely not in 10 years. Where in Hawaii were you? Maybe in 20 years. We always go to Turtle Bay. Turtle oh, nice. Bay. That's a like nice, good vacation. AKA right? Turtle Gay. Why? Adam goodies? could not retire. I just don't see it for him. He'll yeah. be like, I'm not working today. And then all of a sudden, I'll, I'll hear in the other room, this guy's filming some fucking TikTok all loud. Like he has to make content every day. How do you know this fun. shit though? You've been doing this for so fucking long and like. What shit? The no jumper podcast like you've been in the scene and like you have all these fucking you like i don't know you, it seems like you've been in a couple controversies i'm i'm jaded in general it's like i could have a huge controversy tomorrow and it probably wouldn't really like register as like that big a deal like, you don't give a fuck uh i i give like as a little of a fuck as like i give such a little fuck that most people probably couldn't imagine how little of a fuck i give but did the whole yeah. jason love shit get to you at all there were moments where it was a little rough but for the most part no yeah. I, mean, I agreed to it. So it was kind of like, even when I was kind of like, Ugh, I'm sick of fucking hearing about this shit or whatever, it's still like, well, you chose to do this content arc and you're enjoying the positive parts of it, which is that you're getting all this viral attention and shit. So you might as well ride out the annoying parts as well. Yeah. I mean, did did you, were you cool with all that? Was I cool with? Were you yeah. cool with having this dick in you? <laughs> no, I mean, like, was that awkward? Like, it was seriously, was that awkward at the house after? Um, like, were you... Like where it was ever. There, it was like new territory. So like, for example, I is this too old to talk about? By the way, yeah, it's alright. I mean, we're we're like way past it now. So it's like everyone's like, oh, this relationship is gonna be done, and it's like it's been three months or whatever. And I feel like we're still doing so good, and it really is not something we think about on a daily basis at all. But at the beginning, it was definitely like new territory where it was like I didn't know how to talk to you about it. I was like, oh, I have the video. Like, should I show him? Like, just weird stuff like that where. We just never had to talk about things like that before, you know? Yeah, it's like one of those things where I remember like my whole life I was scared of getting jumped and then I got jumped and it was like, oh, like I had five dudes trying to fucking kill me at the same time. And it's like, yeah, I have a black eye, but it's like, whatever. Like it wasn't really that big a deal. Yeah. And then after that, I just couldn't have, been, I couldn't be as scared of getting jumped again after that. So it's like, this is like the ultimate thing that every dude is scared of or, or, or not hyped on is the idea of their girl fucking another dude. Obviously, for most guys, if this happens, it's just going to be like something that happens to them. They're not going to make the decision to have this happen to them. But, you know, it was it was it was weird and nerve wracking and stuff. But then having done it, it's like, oh, OK, it wasn't, I ask you something wasn't that bad after seeing like his like size. Were you like worried about like when you guys slept together after that? Like, were you intimidated at all? He I feel would. like it's largely arrived back at its original size, so I think we're okay. You think I got permanently stretched out from one day? Well, maybe not stretched out, but you're like, holy shit, like this guy's fucking, I don't know where you're at, but like, yo, he's I do, fucking. I don't know. Some of these dicks are so big that I feel like they do do serious long-term damage to these vaginas. Right. Like that, I don't know. That's just the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I don't know. If it's that's okay. Right. I'm just like, <laughs> I feel like women's vaginas don't really stretch from penises, only from childbirth. But... I just don't think his was big enough. Oh my it God. was I, but it wasn't, you know, you need a real premium one to like really. I just think like if my chick ever went and hung out with Johnny, right? And then came out. Johnny and, Sins? Yeah. And then came and hung out with me after I'd be like kind of insecure. Like, fuck, like how do I compete with that session that she just had? Yeah. That's fair, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he fucks girls for like three hours. So yeah, I'd, I'd be offended too. What's like a, what's like a good amount of time, by the way, to like. Most of the girls that I talk to when we're on set, we're, we're both like 15 minutes, right? Yeah, like we are good with like 10 to 15 minutes of sex. But like we know people who will like film for an hour and a half, which to me 
I just don't really get it. Like if I if I even like Selena Powell the other day, it's like I'm getting head from her. She's giving me head for like I don't know two minutes. It's like what am I going to do this for like five more minutes to just run out the clock? Right. Or are you going to do so many sex positions that you're just like switching it up every like two three minutes? Which is what they aim for in porn because they're trying to cater to every single type of right. person. But we but don't have the same incentives as the, yeah. the right. studios. What about like three minutes, but it's super good. <laughs> I mean, okay. So the thing with girls, I feel like, like in your personal life, girls take longer to warm up. Like mm. girls need foreplay. So I feel like if you gave the girl a good amount of foreplay and then maybe it was only three minutes, that might be better than it just being three minutes where you shove it in and rammer and you come. Yeah. How do you rate yourself as a lover? And what, what do you need to work on? <laughs> well, I, 15 minutes, like, like 15 minutes, like no, you're not wearing a glove, right? No. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. But 15 minutes is 15 minutes solid. is a fucking long time. Yeah, that's yeah. a long time. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I've done that, obviously, but, like, I'm, like, like a solid, like, three to six minute guy. Is there foreplay? Yeah. You eating around? No, I don't really do that. You don't eat out the vagina or the asshole? No. I've done the what ass one kissing, time. Are you kissing or rubbing her? Are you whispering things in her ear? Like Yeah, a little whispering. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Take your pants off. She, no, I'm just like we do this thing where she whispers whispers in my ear, but she does an RFK Jr. impersonation. She'll be like, "Ukraine is taking advantage of our," you know. That's, it's like that's not true, is it? Yeah, no, I love it. Joke, I, I get super real. super hard. Just so what? Should I tell it. her that? Like, yo, <laughs> no. pretend you're fucking Batman and fucking yeah. the Dark Knight. Tell her how we need to stop funding Ukraine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'll try that. Maybe I'll last longer. Putin's actually. It's not that bad. Just yeah. let him take your country. It's fine. Yeah. I gotta. T- I, Retire this joke, please. <laughs> I gotta work on my whispering. I think absolutely not. Um, okay, so now the thing, the, the like your version of the Jason Love controversy was the Andrew Schultz controversy. <laughs> the whole world kind of got to see you get fucked on camera. Yeah, that sucked, bro. <laughs> Are not you gonna lie. like? Were you actually genuinely worried about them releasing it? I watched the whole thing today. Okay, and. Before that, I had just seen clips and kind of like heard about it. And today I watched the whole thing. My thoughts on it. I've known Andrew Schultz for a long time. And that from the beginning felt like a different version of Andrew Schultz than what I've seen before. Like, I feel like he was not in a great mood that day, even outside of whatever happened between you guys. I just don't really feel like that was, that just wasn't the Andrew Schultz that I'm just used to seeing. It wasn't as fun loving. Did you watch it too? I watched it too. I didn't finish it, but I got to the parts with you and yeah, I, I it definitely like, I was confused by it because he was in a much se- more serious place, but mm-hmm. I guess he was maybe just so hyped on the pod and he thought it was going to be different because that's the kind of style of podcast he normally do, does, right? Where he's just like talking to his friends but he wanted like a real interview, but I do feel like he just like went in on you in a way that I felt like was kind of unfair. Yeah. Like saying like, this is all fake and that's fake yeah, too. And like shit like that. Like everything a, you said, after you know? a while I did just start to feel like this is just like a level of aggression. I'm not used to seeing from Andrew and it just doesn't really, something feels off. And it was know. sort of like yeah. the easy to pick on you thing that you're sure. saying with the Nelk guys that sort of, he's not going to go with Kyle or Steve, right? Yeah, and that was unfair because you were the one who I felt like was talking the most and engaging the most, which is what he asked for from the beginning of the podcast. Like, who's carrying this? Who's going to engage? And I feel like you were carrying the most. And so you were an easier target in a way. Is what we just said the mainstream opinion that you've seen? Or do you think that most people thought that Andrew Schultz was right to be annoyed by you? Well, I mean, there's there's two things, right? Like my my persona, my character is like, like you said, whatever the word was, the whipping fucking thing. The whipping so like people, people like to go at me and shit and like people like to fuck with me mm-hmm. and whatever in the comments, whatever it is. But, um, uh, like when I showed up there, you're right. Like there, we, we got noticed that we were going to do that like maybe six hours before mm. uh, and we were doing happy dad events all day. So we were fucking burnt out like 8am to fucking 5pm. And then we, when I walked into, I just, the energy felt like kind of odd. Mm. I don't really know what it was, but like. Andrew was sitting there with like his people talking. Mm-hmm. We went straight to um, the booth where we were doing the pod. Like me, Kyle, and Steve started riffing a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what really happened. Like I, I really can't explain that because I thought with Nelk, you always think like, especially me, I'm like, yo, these guys might be fucking with me. Mm-hmm. Like so, part of me was uh, like, yo, this is like, like they a, put him up to it or something. Yeah, like yo, th- this is like set up. Like okay, this guy's fucking with me a little bit. I'm just gonna try and do my best, whatever. But then it just took a turn where I was like, yo, this guy's getting a little personal. And I was so like, people don't really know this, but this was, that was a year ago. That yeah. was filmed so long ago. And mm-hmm. that was one of my 
not first episodes, but I was still early in the game. Right. Um, and so I didn't really know how to handle it. I think I would have handled it differently now, but you, I was just so confused. You would have punched him if it happened. Now. No, I just think I would have been like, bro, like, like in my opinion, if, if someone came in and was sitting in this chair and talked to you like that right. on your own show, you'd be like, yo, bro, like you're being super disrespectful right now. Because as the person being interviewed, it's kind of like assumed that even if you think that the questions that you're being asked are sort of dumb or lame or whatever, that you're just going to kind of roll with the punches, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like that, that was kind of like the vibe is that he just wasn't like happy with the quality of the interview, which I feel you, but at the same time, like, if you do an interview and it and you're kind of surprised that the person interviewing you doesn't know as much about you as you might have expected, to me, you just but that you, didn't you even seem like it, his right? biggest qualm, like because like Steve wasn't talking at all and all he was doing was praising Steve, mm. like it just didn't like all something the energies think, weren't matching. Something I realized, I think a lot of these people come in kind of like knowing, like that guy, like Andrew definitely came in did his research, right? He knows like everyone loves Steve, Kyle's the boss, <laughs> and then there's me, right? So he knew to kind of throw shade at me. Um, but like, uh, bro, like, I, I don't know. I, I To this day, I can't really explain that. But like, we, we talked about it before. We're like, yo, we, we don't really, that was, I think, our first comedian. And we wanted to kind of like, we watched his stand up before. And we were kind of like, yo, let's just try and like, lack of a better term, like bro down with him and just kind of like have a conversation. Mm. Like how he would do it on his show. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what's funny about Andrew? And I love Andrew for the record. But like, so you're siding with him? One, well, no, but one of the accusations about him that I've seen, I saw like one of these fucking comedy uh, commentary channels like make a video about this the other day, but basically like saying that Andrew plays like a fake version of himself on the podcast where he thinks that everything that everybody says on flagrant is fucking hilarious or brilliant. So it's like that like, he gets some criticism for that. I don't know how widespread that criticism is. You're leaving? I do. I don't want to interrupt you, but I have to go. I love you. Bye, Sandy. Bye. I'll text you later? Yes. Okay. But so, see at the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, like people will say that that Andrew plays like an exaggerated version of himself on flagrant, which I have myself have kind of noticed that like sometimes I'll notice him like laughing, and it's like he thinks that the joke is funnier than the joke actually is. But it's okay because it's a podcast and it's like you got to keep the energy going and everything. But I kind of felt like your exchange with him there was like the exact opposite of that. Like he, yeah, he kind of like chose to like take a more negative you know side of things which I, I, i'm not really like used to that from him no i but like you don't see him go on that many podcasts right like have you seen him uh, besides rogan so i think uh i don't I, bro like i don't know if it was his ego or like he just wanted to come at me but i to this day i don't i don't really understand it i'm not upset about it mm. you know what i'm saying like i could have taken it at the time i took it personal i was like bro why is this guy fucking going so ham at me like you said, like, yeah, I'm not asking you the craziest intellectual questions. I'm just trying to, like, actually, like, have a conversation. So do you feel like it coming out was net positive or negative for Steiny? The positive, brand? dude. I think it was good overall. Yeah. Put more attention on you, and you feel like overall you kind of came out looking better than him? Uh, I don't know. I think so. Like, I thought the way that I carried myself, like, people can always say what they think, right? Like, mm. yo... You acted like a bitch, but like being in that position is way different than people that, you know, are just DMing me or fucking with me. You're kind of in the more sympathetic role there because everybody can imagine themselves having somebody be kind of mean to them. And like, I, I feel like I would imagine that most people would have kind of expressed some degree of sympathy because you did seem so genuinely lost and curious For about sure. why the fuck this was happening. Yeah. It was definitely a fair balance of like people that came at me and then because he he's got his fans right right that are probably huge fan base at this point sure. too i wonder to what extent they really tuned into that yeah the people that are coming at me and then i had other people that are reaching out to me like hey guy or like hey signing like that guy acted like you know he was being an asshole like don't worry he didn't do anything wrong so it was like a fair balance but i mean i don't take shit personally at this point you know what i'm saying like if people want to fuck with me like that 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 was a little bit too far because i took it like personally but I think at the end of the day, like, we're fucking in this game, so. I feel like Andrew has, like, almost the problem that he's, like, a really, really smart comic. So he kind of knows what's going on during the conversation to such an extent that, like, he, like, I, I, I asked him about Brendan Schaub. I asked him, like, Did mm -hmm. he, do you think Brendan Schaub's a funny comedian? Yeah. And he just, like, immediately was like, oh, so now you're doing the clickbait shit. Yeah. And I was, like, kind of, like, taken off guard a little bit because I'm like, 
oh, right, he's just as smart as me about this shit, and he knows exactly what I'm doing when For I sure. say that. And by saying that about somebody that me and him are both cool with, it is kind of like, oh, I'm just like kind of going for the viral title real quick right there. The same way that when I'm on Bradley's shit and he just keeps trying to get me to say a number about how much we made off of the, the Jason Love I scene or that. whatever. It's like, I know what you're doing. Like we're, we're both like speaking the same language here. I know that it'd be a really good title if you could put X millions of dollars or whatever. But yeah, I mean. That, uh, but if you look thing. at it in like the, the grand scheme of things, like he also got like a lot of Nelk fans and he got a lot of attention from our side. True. So he benefited as well. Mm. And like I said, like you know this, a lot of Nelk people like to fuck with me, the fans, like the, it's part of the joke. Mm. So there was a probably a good amount that like, were like, fuck, I love this guy. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. But so, okay. Do you, do you feel like, is that part of your mission to sort of like grow out of that role? Like get to the point where you have enough respect amongst the crew in the community that they no longer think that you're an appropriate target for their lashings. I guess the, the only thing about that is I, I, I guess I could get upset because I think that sometimes that'll overshadow. Like, I think I can, I'm, I think I'm a funny guy. I think I can be really funny, especially with my own show. Mm. So I hope people also see like that side of me and mm. they're like, yo, this kid's funny. Not only like, is he this dumbass or he gets fucked with, but yo, he's actually like a funny guy. Right. So that's the only issue I have with that is like, I don't want that to be my entire character. Right. If you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this dude can do a lot more. Can you see life beyond? Nelk, or is your mind like totally just focused on what you could do within this brand or you ever think about what might come after yeah i mean i think about it all the time dude like you see the shit changes all the time mm. like this fucking game and things can change tomorrow um but i mean at the end of the day like Nelk has given me that platform that i wouldn't have had right so i start off basically with a head start that mm -hmm. a lot of people don't get right so it's definitely helped me um like i said i started my own show because it gives you that like creative control you can get respect from people but dude like Nelk is so good because they continue to adapt and they continue to create like mm. we fucking they had the Nelk channel for 10 years before me full send podcast they crushed that Nelk 2 starting now they're on snapchat like maybe we'll do in real life streaming like mm. they just continue to create new shit do you think IRL stream is the future you know I Sneeko said that the red I, pill is dead and IRL streaming is lit. What the, yeah, what's up with the red pill, blue pill? Because I think I took the, is the blue pill when you're in the Matrix? <laughs> yeah, the blue pill is basically accepting whatever the, the mainstream media tells you and the red pill is going against it and having Andrew Tate be your Okay, you want to know my only, only issue with that and I said this to Sneeko, was that bro, in the Matrix, the movie, when are they happiest or when are they normal? It's when they're in the Matrix. It's been a while since I've seen it. But the, like Andrew Schultz was saying, it was written... Apparently about the trans experience. Okay, I don't know about all that. Right, I was shocked when I heard that too. I got. I actually really want to like rewatch the you whole series because I think I've seen the first one like two times, but that was like twenty years ago, and I never seen any of the other ones. Bro, first the first and second are good. The third's okay. It's like The Godfather. Like the first and second are amazing, and then the third's like whatever. Okay, but um, I think The Godfather three is better than The Godfather oh two. My right, God. I just remember. What the fuck, it's been so long. I, the I, first I, one's the best movie of all time. The first one, yeah, but the I have no business good. commenting on this. I won't. I won't. Um. But yeah, I mean, I don't even remember. Yes, yes. If uh, I see myself outside this, yeah, like like where you could kind of see it going. After. I don't know, bro. Like it, my ideal thing would be to be doing the same what I'm doing now and just having like at the end of the day, like you want to have creative control. You want to have freedom. Mm. I'm happy to work with Kyle, Nelk, John, Sammy for the rest of my life, honestly, because they've been good to me. Right, and it's been a good relationship. So right now, I don't see. I don't know. I don't see like not being with them. And especially like with you starting your podcast and being able to kind of like create your own thing under that umbrella. That's going to sure. be pretty good too. Bro, yeah. and nothing's better than when you have people around you that believe in you and give you that chance. Right. Like, because you get that opportunity and that might be your only opportunity. So you better fucking crush it. Facts. I, I imagine you, like, is the lifestyle kind of overwhelming being with Nelk and everything? Because I just imagine that the drinking is a lot to handle. For sure. I mean, dude, it's... The lifestyle is fucking nuts. Like, I'm going to, this month I'm going to Miami, Dubai, mm -hmm. back to Miami, Toronto. Uh, I'm stopping in Colorado. Like, it's fucking, you don't stop traveling, and with that and drinking, you get a little bit of anxiety. Is this all promoting Happy Dad for the most part? Happy Dad, the filming Nelk, Full Send Pod. Like, people, I think, don't understand how much we have to do to make this shit happen. Right. Like, we're going to Dubai to do a Nelk video. 
going to Miami to do a full sun podcast, mm-hmm. going back to Miami to do an elk video. Like it's a lot of shit, but yeah, you're right. Like the, the drinking, it's all personal. Like Kyle right now, like he doesn't drink that much. He's he fucking in the gym and shit. So he's doing once a week, only Saturdays. I don't have that kind of discipline. So if you said, I don't want to, I'm, I'm just going to stop drinking completely. Would, do you think that would be kind of weird? Cause it's like some people have to like keep the fucking party vibe going. Of course. And stuff. But does Steve not really drink anymore either? Uh, I don't know. I think he drinks like he drinks really for what, when he's filming content. Okay. Kind of like, I'll do it too. Just like it makes it more fun. Easier. I liked when he was chugging bottles and smoking cigarettes all the time. That was like prime Steve era. Yeah. He always talks about how like he had superpowers. Like that's back when he had just been starting and like when fucking he was getting like, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're, I think it's different once you're starting out and you're kind of broke. Yeah. And then you have that feeling like, yo, I can do this shit. And then once you start to get bigger and bigger, the money starts coming in, you can kind of transition into something else but he didn't have like a doctor telling me he needed to chill with slamming bottles Bro, of whiskey i don't know i mean i'm sure a doctor would tell you yo that's probably not the best any normal thing human you. being if you drank that much you would but dude he be- can also there's a video of him from fucking probably like three years ago at the cloud house where he literally takes 12 slices of pizza and rolls them up and he eats 12 slices like you're eating one I do, slice i remember that yeah. and you're just like yo what the fuck like i could never do that no one could do that right so you're just like he he's a different breed bro. when you look at what happened with shoe nice do you remember shoe nice of course when you look at shoe nice and then you look at steve it's kind of impressive that he was able to like make it out of that like human trash compactor mode like that was kind of what it looked like his future was going to be and he managed to become more of a overall entertainer but i mean it's crazy too getting canceled from youtube like i just still can't believe that he's like permanently canceled from youtube for the dumbest reason ever i know i don't think anyone will really understand that yeah i don't know because it sucks because at the end of the day steve has a big heart he's a good dude right and it just sucks to see that happen to somebody who put dude like when i was working with him like like i said bro he's so passionate and would do anything to like make the video fucking great get the biggest banger and he was not slowing down at all and it's one thing if you like are are like oh you know andrew tate like not being able to be on youtube or whatever is kind of you know at least there's a clear reason people think that his message is offensive or whatever but like with steve it's like he did nothing i know like he fucking promoted a gambling website one time by accident on another channel it's insane yeah, I don't know. It's a fucking gray area. But There's like, a lot of people who are banned that like you can at least kind of see it. But with Steve, sure. it's like this is so obviously like a mistake that maybe you know ban him off the platform for like a week or two. Give him give him a little suspension. Yeah, for fuck? sure. I think that with Tate too is like Tate wasn't only just a creator though. Mm. Like he had all these other fucking ventures or whatever he did, right? So like he that was like a it almost seemed like a secondary thing to him. But I feel I, like Steve is like probably good financially right like he's yeah i made mean, enough money throughout the last few years that it can't be that bad yeah no he's good and he, obviously he's part of happy dad yeah, yeah yeah so he he's okay financially but is he still like motivated to make channel make content for rumble and all these other platforms i don't know i mean i think him and brad have been irl streaming right, right. i think this like you said i think this in real life streaming bro i think it's opened a lot of doors for people uh-huh. the only thing that i do wonder about it is it seems like after fusi and, like, if you've seen, like, Neon and Sneeko, like, they're crushing it. Mm. But you have to fucking, with streaming, I feel like you have to one-up every fucking stream. Yeah. which it's definitely is, not a leisurely pastime. Whereas, like, sitting in front of your computer playing Fortnite for eight hours while you're just kind of talking to the mic, that seems like something I could, you know, I can't play yeah. Fortnite, but I could, like, sit there and play a video game for eight hours. It doesn't sound that hard. But, like, to, to really keep shit interesting doing the IRL shit is, like, pretty impressive. Yeah, but you, that's the thing is like you said, like it used to be chatting with the fucking, Mm. you're talking to the chat, you're playing Fortnite. Now you got to do, take a camera everywhere you go. You got to make sure that shit's fucking entertaining every day. You got to one up the last thing. Like, and it's wild for people like, I don't know how sustainable that is. Like, people like me who lived through the Ice Poseidon era and remember like him literally basically like taking his life into his fucking hands every day because there was just insane fans showing up at his house and yeah he's and that now you have sneak and neon running around with security guards and like they're, they're like renting out mansions to do this kind of content and shit it's like it's kind of a different version of it but you pretty much have to do those sort of things if you want it to be sustainable in the 100%. long run because it's such a dangerous concept but like most of the people that i've known who did irl streaming basically like destroyed their own lives and like at some point kind of 
it just was not good for them living a healthy lifestyle, and they just had to stop at a certain point, which is kind of Bro. wild. Well, you saw what happened to Fousey. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, and he's just another example added to the list, yeah. That's the one thing I don't know about it is, like, how long can that really last? Yeah. And you also, like, you are kind of, like, giving up where you are at all times. Right. And it, I don't know if, like, are you on TikTok? And you yeah. see the clips? A lot of it's, like, they're, like, fucking, dude, it's, like, a reality TV show. Right. Like they're, you're fighting, you're fucking talking shit, like... I don't know. It's it's a whole new world to me. But, I mean, if it's, like, what's hot right now, a lot of people are going to start doing it. It's weird for me as a YouTube creator, too, though, because it's, like, our business model is based on, like, doing interviews, editing some of the swears out and everything just to get it monetized and then cutting the clips and then you put it online and then you get to monetize the content. Whereas with the IRL streaming shit, like, I don't know how much they're making on Kick and shit like that, but, like, just streaming on YouTube or Twitch or whatever is, like, not some huge amount of money you make you nah. get subs and you get little donations here and there but it's like the people fucking love it but it's oh, yeah. not necessarily like the best business model well you see you see fucking the, they talk about the kickbacks and you you have a creator who's out there and they're like yo this kid's getting fucking 50 million a fucking year right why wouldn't i start doing that but i feel like the kickback has got to run out at a certain point like once they build their platform to be as big as they need it to be i feel like at some point it's just they're not going to be able to just cut these gigantic fucking I think checks. it's almost there. Yeah. Like, they're, I don't I don't go on Twitch that much. I'll only go to Kick now. But I think Kick's pretty much made a statement like, yo, we're just as big. Right. Like, who's, who's I don't know who's going to Twitch. I don't know who's going to Kick. But, like, from what I see, it seems like most people are going to go to Kick. I mean, they have, like, a cool brand image. But are you, like, making money off that shit? Like, nah, the you got to get the Kick bag, bro. Yeah, you have to, like, you gotta get the deal. You got to chase that fucking exclusive. But they're not just, like, serving ads on your content? I should probably check that out. I don't know. Spend more time on Kick. Maybe you should get on there. Eh. What would your in-real-life stream look like? <sighs> Gang members talk? pulling up and shooting me? <laughs> have you ever had a scare like that? You definitely have. Yeah. How do you deal with I mean, that not, shit, like, bro? literally shooting me, but, you know, that kind of thing. Oh. Uh, well, we have security, and, you know. What's been the biggest scare for you? Anything? Besides the drum lighter? Um, yeah, mostly the drum lighter. No, the biggest scare, I mean, I had two guys in like three days like come to the store with guns trying to do something, and then both of the guns ended up being fake, which was still kind of like a weird reality check of like, oh, okay, like you are kind of like well-known enough now that somebody might try to do something to you. And not just like a sane person who has a vendetta against you, but like a crazy person whose brain doesn't make any sense and they might do it just to get some attention or whatever. So I'm a lot more careful. You're pretty much in the rap game, right? Yeah. Well, I have beef with rappers, so it feels like I'm in the rap game. Bro, that's something I don't ever want to have. They're all bitches. Yeah? No, not all of them, but but uh, quite a few are. If you had to say your top three rappers, who would it be? Right now? Just of all time. Oh, I don't want to do all time. Why? Have you ever done that? We're talking about the moment. Like, okay, so what then, I'm listening to right now. Okay, right now then. Probably Young Boy. Okay. And Dirk. And Drake? I mean, I like Drake. But you but, wouldn't put him in there? I mean, do I drive around listening to him all the time? No. What do you drive around listening to? Young Boy and Dirk. <laughs> King Vaughn. <laughs> <Really? Bond. laughs> I mean a lot a lot of that. I'll go back to my my music right now. Let's see what what a search. So you drive around listening to Young Boy like Oh, Boston? Olivia Rodrigo. Oh shit! Big fan. What of about her. T- you? You don't listen to T Swift. I do like T Swift a lot. Yeah, yeah, blank space. My girl fully got me into her. I, I, whatever she plays around me, I eventually become addicted to. But I've been listening to this dude YTB Fat. Yeah, I know. That's what I, else I think you fucking discover these like new guys all the time. Yeah, but like that dude YTB Fat might sound like a new name or whatever, but he's probably got like he's getting like hundreds of thousands of likes on all his fucking photos. He's got like 10 million plays on a lot of his videos. It's like he's like from I don't want to fuck it up, but I think he's from Texas. Yeah, and he's like fucking gigantic from that world. But that's my weird thing is that I'm like, I know about all these rappers from like every different fucking state. And like, okay, what if I told you my two favorite albums are Get Rich or Die Trying? I think that's the most timeless album maybe of all time. That album is like summer after I graduated high school for me. But you can go back and still listen to it. I probably wouldn't, but I could. Okay, and uh, finally, Rich Chief Keef. That was a good one, too. Shit, I'm not listening to that on the way home. It's a fire. That's a banger. That was yeah. the most commercial project he ever put out. Like, everything else he ever put out was just, like, pretty nonsensical in comparison to that project. Yeah. Well, he used to do with Young Chop, right? Yeah. And except for him with Young Chop. Him they and Young Chop were the best fucking duo ever. Long, Young Chop lost his mind. Yeah? Yeah. Has he come on here? He got shot in an Uber in 21 Savage's hood. What? Yeah, it was pretty fucking hilarious for everybody who watched it play out online. He was just, like, trying to slide on 21 Savage in an Uber. And somebody shot at him while he was on live. I can't be in this rap game. No, it's it's not. You think I could handle that or no? 
Probably not. I mean, for me, I, have, like, a I was tat. on the other side of the country while it was happening, so I felt okay about you it. You have like a fucking face tat, and like you're, you got more respect like that, right? I don't know if the face tat does it necessarily, but yeah. uh, what, what's your relationship with Six Nine? Uh, I haven't talked to him or seen him in probably like a year and a half, two years now. Is he on the outs with the Happy Dad squad and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, I don't really know. I think him and Steve don't really fuck with each other anymore. From oh, what I've him seen. and Steve had a whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I saw some stories. I haven't talked Steve to Steve. Posted on the story, and I didn't know what it was about. And then academics said that Steve got Six Nine a Rumble deal, and Six Nine was supposed to stream one time a week on Rumble. And then Six Nine ended up like not doing it. And then Steve got super fucking mad at him because it basically made him look bad and fucked his shit up. But apparently, Six Nine did film stuff with Nelk and filmed like like he filmed a bunch of shit. But then like Nelk didn't want to put it out because like the brand affiliation. I mean, sometimes like we forget how hated Six Nine really is by the mainstream and stuff. So, yeah. we, we, have you been in on those conversations that like they didn't want Happy Dad to seem like it was fully being endorsed by Six Nine because of the image that it might bring with it? Uh, I haven't been involved in those conversations, but like you know, Six Nine, bro, like right. he has a lot of issues and beef with people. You guys are doing shit with Snoop Dogg, right? Snoop Dogg is the kind of guy who might we have a whole death row right. launch with Snoop. I could see Snoop Dogg saying like, oh, you guys fuck with 6 9 I don't want anything to do with you. Right. I mean, that's that's the risk that you have with that guy. I will say, like, on the flip side, like, people love to watch that motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I don't know. He's still huge regardless, yeah. His numbers are crazy, and, like, he, I personally, like, he's a funny guy. He's a character, bro. Mm. Like, sometimes, I think when you get lost in the numbers, it's just like, dude, like, this guy is entertaining. He can fucking help bring eyeballs. But, like you said, like, there's a lot of street drama that yeah and like a few years removed it does seem kind of ridiculous that like you guys are supposed to care about him snitching on these gang members it's just like why, why the fuck is that your problem right yeah i don't think that i mean that causes issues with other people but with us it's like yeah. i don't know about all that shit right and well because you guys fuck with dirk yeah dirk came on the full send pod you know so right there like and that's like it's not just like a rap beef because Six Nine said and did shit about Dirk and his dead homies and his dead family members that he's just not gonna be able to let go. Yeah. And like for you guys, I could see that being kind of complicated. Yeah. I mean, I don't get, bro. I'm fucking staying out of that shit. Yeah. I don't know how how serious that shit gets when it comes to the rap game. I'm sure it's fucking serious. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I don't. I'm not really involved with that shit anymore. Have you ever eaten the Whoops? No. What are those? The oh, cereal. the Durkios? No, 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 no. The Whoops. Who's Whoop? Uh, <laughs> whoop. <laughs> FYBJ Main. No, are those better than the Durkios? Some would say. Some How would say that the Durkios are kind of lacking in comparison to the Whoops. Why? Do you want? Do, can I get a box of Whoops, or is that like a one and done exclusive? I would give it to you, but that's a one hundred dollar box of cereal. I want it. I, I, I'll give you hundred bucks. I will for send it. you the URL, and you can spend hundred dollars. Oh, you can go get them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, then it's not that. And there's a, th there's one box with Cardi B's signature on it that they're trying to sell for ten thousand dollars. Fuck. Okay, I'm not gonna get that. I'll get the hundred dollar box and t try it out though. For sure, I'm pushing dirt. I'm pushing Whoops. I'm wow, off Durkios. All about the Whoops. Do you eat cereal like that? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to get in shape. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So, what else you got coming up? Anything we should know about? Um. No, nah, man, I'm just focused on my stuff, going to Dubai for a little bit. Uh, I might be linking with someone big out there. Mm. If you, and then we got UFC out there. Dubai. Who goes to Dubai? I don't know. That's one place I have You're a smart been. guy. You could maybe think about it. Some Figure prince it or something? Could Some be. MMA fighter who lives closer to Dubai. Is Conor McGregor? No, nah, he's a he's an Irishman. Yeah, but he seems like he could just be in Dubai. He could be in Dubai. Yeah. But it's not him. Hmm. I'll ask you off camera. Yeah. So I can figure it out. But, uh, yeah. Good to talk to you, man. I'm sure that everybody out here will find this very inspirational, how you can go from somebody who's kind of pursuing a pretty mundane, ordinary way of life to, like, you know, just putting yourself in the right places and making something huge out of your life. It's pretty inspirational. Dude, I appreciate that. And honestly, dude, this is a fucking honor to come on here. Oh, man. Yeah. It's, it's my pleasure. Fuck yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for having me, bro. Big fan. My guy. Let's go. Steiny. Let's go. Thank my you, man. Bro. No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Go get yourself some whoops. It do hit different. Like, comment, and subscribe. We out.